Should be live. At least we should be, I'm not so sure. Yeah! Love is a dangerous thing. <laughs> okay. I don't know what was going on with my live event. I'm so terribly sorry that it's not working, but I just did a spontaneous stream. Um, so I hope that this will work much better. It seems to be laggy already, huh? Is my stream lagging? I don't know. I hate the stream now thing. The live events work much better, but for whatever reason, it's just not working. Is it lagging, guys? Let me know in the comments below if it's lagging. Okay. Yeah! Alright, let's get started, guys. I hope you have all of your sketchbooks and pencil crayons ready, or your, your pencils ready. We're gonna start s sketching uh, guinea pigs. Um, for those of you guys who uh, would like to know which guinea pigs I'm drawing, actually, I should probably put the reference photo up. Let me put the reference photo up into the live stream, actually, so you guys can see. But if you guys are really curious to see the guidelines that I'm using, check out my Facebook page. Um, it's listed in the link description, like the video description down below. You guys can see on my Facebook fan page that I have the guinea pig photos, and I also have the reference lines or the guidelines that I'm using. Um, give me a second, I actually totally forgot to put the image of the guinea pig. So we're going to be drawing two guinea pigs today. Um, we're going to put up the first image of the very first guinea pig. So let's put him in here. <laughs> He's going to be rather big on the, on the stream. So let's put him a little bit smaller. But again, if you guys are curious for the guidelines that I use, go check out my Facebook fan page. It has all of the sort of like... Yeah, reference lines that I use. Alright! So I'm kind of eating at the same time. I'm a little bit hungry and I'm kind of like low blood sugar, so I don't feel as good as I should right now, but we can push through. Brushes and guinea pigs. Yeah, hi bunny, how are you? I am fantastic. I hope you guys are good too. So let's begin the drawing. I think it might be a little bit out of focus. Let me just focus, refocus this here. Um, I'm gonna use this as reference. Give me one second, guys. We're just refocusing the webcam. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. All right, so do we have all of our pencils ready and sharpened, ready to go? Let's get drawing. So for the pencils that I'm using, I'm basically just using a regular HB pencil, Stadler, nothing too special. You can also use um, the like the Prisma color. You can have different colors of this. I definitely recommend sketching in these ones because they're much easier to erase and they just don't appear on your drawings as much. Um, but for this case, we can just use a regular HB pencil. It's really up to you. You can draw with a mechanical pencil, you can draw with a regular pencil or a colored pencil. All right, so let's get drawing. We're gonna be drawing this little guinea guinea pig here on the left side. Uh, let's get the reference photo up. Maybe the guinea pig's a little too big. Uh, give me a second, guys. <laughs> Should have prepared this. I was making tea and cutting strawberries up. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so first and foremost, you wanna when you're looking at the photo of the animal, you want to kind of um, isolate some of the major shapes of the animal. For example, the face, the body, the ears, the little paws. And then eventually you can flesh out the rest of the um, the actual drawing. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the circle where the head will be. So that's kind of like the starting point, the starting point that I always do. And at this point, you don't really want to sketch too hard. You want to do it quite light. Let's see if this is lining up on the live stream. Yeah, okay. So you don't want to sketch too hard, guys, because it's going to be harder to erase your lines afterwards. And again, don't be afraid to not make a perfect circle. If the circle's not perfect, it does not really matter, honestly. This is sort of like your guideline. 
And I always have difficulties like actually drawing a perfect circle. Um, you'll notice that I do a lot of um, back and forth here to kind of just get the shape right. Okay, so now that we've got the circle bound, <laughs> it looks a bit messy. I'm probably not going to be answering your questions right now, guys. I know you guys are you know, putting questions in the chat, but this is an art lesson, so I'm just showing you guys how to draw guinea pigs. Um, but yeah, we'll try to get to the questions later once I'm actually coloring it in. I think it's going to be easier for me to explain. But for now, I'm just going to explain how I draw. So we draw the circle first, um, and that's basically, uh, yeah, that's the shape of the head. That's where you're going to start off with the head. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of map out the direction of the face. So this guinea pig, as you can see in the reference photo, he's looking off to like three-quarter view. So we're going to do the same. We're going to just sketch a line sort of downwards like that. And you can see that the the nose will align directly with this line, the nose and the mouth. Um, so he's looking off into kind of this direction. So we've got that. And now we also want to sketch another line where we'll indicate where the eyes will be. Um, so we're going to go like this. And his head, like his vision is a little bit kind of like... I don't know, it's on an angle, it's a little bit curved, so the line will be also curved. Next thing what we're going to do is we're going to do some sort of like little circles for the ears to indicate where the ears will be. And I'm just going to do little half circles. You don't have to do like, you can do full circles, or you can do little half ones. I'm just going to do half circles. And we're going to do a smaller half circle here. Because the ear on this side is a little bit smaller, although it does stick out a lot. So we're going to just extend that. Vigo Agar Snaps. Is this gonna get up on your channel after the live stream? Yes! Yes, it will. Everything is archived in like a stream playlist that I have. Uh, so yeah, I definitely will. Ah, it's cur curved. And again, guys, don't worry about getting the lines not straight, not um, curved enough. If they're a bit crooked, if they're shaky, don't worry about it. This is just guides. Okay, so we've got, he looks a little bit like a teddy bear. <laughs> But we can already kind of flesh out where the the eyeball will be. And the eyeball, again, it's... Guinea pigs have quite round eyes. They're like little buttons. And you can just kind of flesh out where the eye will be here. Same goes with the nose. The nose, I always start off with triangular, like triangle shape. When I'm drawing rabbits, it's pretty much like a triangle. Um, any sort of like cat is also a triangle. Dogs are pretty much round, but in terms of guinea pigs, they do have very V, V-shaped noses. So we're just gonna kind of make a triangle shape here, not worry too much about the shape for now. And we're gonna extend with the line from the, from the tip of the nose down. So this is gonna where, where you're gonna shape the lips. And guinea pigs have very like funny little mouths. They're, they're quite small, but they also have little lips and they're very visible lips. So you want to already start to draw these lips. Eh. We're just gonna do like a little little baby lip there. <laughs> you can also start to draw the nostrils. Nostrils are a little bit like, um, again, they're just triangles. Um, within the actual larger triangles. So it's like shapes within shapes within shapes. So you don't really have to um, worry too much about getting that wrong. Okay, so generally speaking, this is sort of like the head so far. <laughs> now we can already start to draw the body. And guinea pigs have very like um, potato shaped bodies, very round, uh, and yeah, they look like little potatoes. So um generally speaking the sh the body will pretty much be behind the ear area so if you look at the reference photo behind in the bottom left corner you'll see that the body starts pretty much behind the ear and kind of extends up like towards his head here um so we're gonna draw again just another circle he has kind of a flat behind but we're gonna fix that afterwards so don't worry too much right now about getting this right, fully right. And the circle will extend out towards this way. <laughs> I don't know if I drew his body too short. 
Um, again, this reference line here, it looks like he has a huge head, but in reality, that's where sort of like the cheek will be and the side of his body. So don't be fooled by the fact that his head looks massive compared to his body. This is just showing you where some of the cheek, like the cheek will be and where the color, um, like where the white of his fur will be as well. Eh, he looks pretty funny right now. Uh, it's, it, we're all gonna flush it out in a few moments, guys. So at this point, if you're looking at your drawing and you're like, what the hell am I doing? What is this? Like, ah, uh, like it looks so weird. Don't worry about it. It's just the reference lines. You're really gonna flush it out afterwards. You gotta keep working at it and it's gonna start to develop from there. So don't give up on your drawings. Um, just keep pushing at it. So here we're just gonna draw little circles for the paws. And we're very lucky actually because guinea pigs have very short and stubby paws um, and again they're just like yeah we can just use a circular shape for them like that okay <laughs> and the eye I think it drew a little bit too big um, there's another eye hidden here but we're gonna draw that afterwards so this is how he looks like and typically when I'm drawing this is actually how they will start off which is why I don't show you guys because it looks a little bit funny um, but uh, <laughs> the next part, so we have the, the, the shapes set. The next part is to actually um, shape out the shapes even more. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically to flesh it out. And we're going to start adding more curves. We're going to start adding sort of the outline of the fur, the, um, the pattern of the fur as well. And again, I use the reference lines to really kind of um, guide me in terms of where I should be going. So we're going to first start off with his face. And I want to already start drawing the pattern on his his face, like the white area, because that's going to determine the size of the head, like the shape of the head. So we're going to start off, the white part goes pretty close to his eyeball here. And it extends all the way up to his head, like his forehead. So we're going to fix the top of his head after. So you can start off by drawing the patterns. And again, use a very light touch to your pencil. Don't press too hard because that's actually, um, it's going to be really hard to erase. We have to erase all these lines afterwards. I'm actually drawing harder than I should be um, for the purpose of this exercise, but yeah. Okay, and now what I do, I typically do is I take my pencil and I start to already flesh out kind of the fur as well. And we will make our way all the way around this reference line, the circle. This will be his cheek. And it's up to you how fat and fluffy you want to make it. But this is where the cheek will be. He's going to have fat, fluffy cheeks. And we're going to extend this line all the way underneath his chin. This is how you create... So the mouth and then there'll be the little chin. They have literally no chins, guinea pigs. They have no chins. It's just like mouth and then potato. So we're going to have it here. And uh, we're gonna start the other side of the face now. So we always start with one side of the face and then we, s we kind of mirror it afterwards. Now this side is gonna be a bit harder because his little eyeball is hiding. But here we're gonna extend the white, then we're gonna... Also, you can also start from the bottom as well. And here's actually this is gonna determine like the size of his face because this is where the cheek will really show. Actually, I think it's on the side. I don't know. So you can again just use your pencil to mimic fur and to outline the cheek area of the guinea pig. So we're gonna outline, we're gonna make it kind of round. You can follow the guidelines that you did, like the circle. He's looking really funny. <laughs> and like that. I think I did his face a little too big here. Okay, now you get your eraser and you can start by slowly erasing these lines, the reference lines that we drew earlier. So we're gonna already start to shape the side of his face first. Like that. And you can also erase the lines below his cheek, or his chin, I should say. Like that. 
I'm probably gonna have to redo his eye. I think his eye is a little bit too big. And it's okay if you guys make mistakes. You just erase it and try again. It's no big deal. You can keep trying until you get the shape right. Okay. Now we're gonna work on the ear. Yeah, <laughs> leafy literally no chin. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna work on the ear. The ear has a little bit of, um, like guinea pig ears are a little bit weird. They remind me of four leaf clovers. I don't really know why, but they have this like wavy shape and we're gonna already start to draw this. We're gonna kind of sketch the outline. We're gonna use the half circle that we drew to kind of flesh this out like that. And you again, you can erase the line. So it's very important that you draw very soft at first because you won't be able to raise these lines afterwards and they will stay there and it's gonna look so bad. Now we have the general shape of the ear. We can begin filling in sort of the fluff within the ear. So you can be like, yeah, fluffy, fluffy. <laughs> you can see already that you'll know where to add the color later on based on these outlines. So we're gonna just draw soft fluffy fur within the ears. Of course the fur is gonna extend outward, so from the in inner center of his ear it's gonna extend outwards, but we're gonna do that later on with marker or with pencil crayon, I haven't decided yet. So we could just basically just erase and draw, erase and draw, erase and draw, and then you flesh it out eventually. Woo woo. Hey, buddy. What type of pencil am I using? I'm using just regular HB, and this is Stedla. I typically use um, Faber, uh, the Castell 9000, but I don't have HB in this one. I only have HB and Stedla, so it's just regular HB pencil. And you guys can use, uh, like, you, can, you guys can use a mechanical pencil. It also works really well. Um, I just don't typically draw with a mechanical pencil. I don't really know why. Now the top of his head, we can also begin to build. There's a little bit of curvation happening at the top of his head. And we can kind of form these little ridges already, or these curves. And again, you keep erasing the lines as you go. You redraw it in final form. And here on the left part of his ear, there's a bit of fluff still. So we can already start to sketch out this, this fluff. And then we're gonna add the pattern that we erased, which goes all the way to the top of his head. <laughs> uh. I hope I'm trying to look at your questions at the same time, guys. Oh no, your guinea pig passed away. I'm sorry. That's that really sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Now we're gonna raise the ear here and we're gonna do the same sort of shape. So we're gonna flush it out even more, but using the half circle that we used in terms of the, um, like for the guidelines. And we can already start to flush out the fur that's within the actual inner ear. And this fur is quite long. It's, it's much longer than this one here. And again, we're gonna erase this side, erase the lines, and rebuild it. And the goal when you're erasing the guidelines is not to erase it completely at first. You want to still see a little bit on the paper um, so that you know where you're supposed to draw. It's actually something that's, it's not that difficult to do in terms of remembering where you drew the lines. You'll just understand or like know once you actually do it. Um, so I think that we need to actually extend this part here a little bit outwards. Make it a bit fluffier, a bit more round, give it more shape. And the other bit of the eye kind of pops out. It's gonna look a bit weird actually. I can never do the other part of the eye here. Ay, 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 ay. Kind of like that. We can refix that later on, but for now this is okay. We have to keep erasing and redrawing. There's a little bit of a gap here. I think I drew his ear a little bit too high. We can definitely amend that. Ah! There, 
go. Yeah, I definitely drew his ear too high, so <laughs> if you also drew the ear too high, um, don't be afraid to just erase it and restart. So we're just going to re resketch this part. Like that. Ah, it still looks a bit weird. I can't get this right. Nah! All right, all right. Now the white part of his face, like his side cheek, there's a little bit of orange, like his body pops out from behind this section here. So we want to make sure we have that outlined. Um, we're going to erase this line and we're going to flesh out his body much better. So my advice to you guys is if you're drawing animals, definitely study the posture, study the curves. Um, to understand where you should basically be drawing. And here we're going to also sketch out kind of a V shape. Sometimes what I do also is I sketch out these shapes here. For example, this underneath his fur, like underneath his chest, between his legs, there's definitely a shadowy part. And what I would do sometimes is I will fill this in with an actual shape and kind of shade it so that I know later on when I'm coloring that this should be pretty much full color, um, really strong color. Ah, yes. And I don't know about you guys, but I cannot get a drawing right until I have erased it and redrew it like 20 times. So I'm trying really hard right now to get it right on first first um like first go because i'm showing you guys how like i draw a guinea pig but it's not it's not as easy as it looks because i typically will like not have an audience watching me draw um so this is definitely different for me right now and i'm kind of freaking out um the pause we're gonna get back to later on so we're not gonna do the pause right away i always leave the pause for last kind of last detail um, so the face is pretty much like a lot of the definition and a lot of the realism will come once we color it in. In terms of sketching, I think that there's not much more. We could probably fix the nose area, but a lot of the actual like depth and contrast and like the details will come with the, uh, the pencil crayons or the markers. Um, but what we can do is kind of just outline the general shape of the nose here. So we did draw a triangle shape, but it looks a bit silly. So we can just erase it a little bit. Uh, thanks, Menagia. Menagia? Menagia? Uh, I didn't do it differently. I just, well, I don't usually put that much makeup on. Um, I put a bit of eyeshadow today, so maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't know. And typically when I draw the nose, so the nose, like the guinea pig nose is quite pink. I will not generally draw an outline. I kind of know um, later on when I'm coloring that I will fill this in with actual color um, but what I like to do is I like to kind of just sketch the outline in terms of the, where the fur will start so around the little nose here like that and these nose are his lips are like puffy lips he's got puffy puffy lips in here like that okay I really have to work on his body. His body looks really weird. Okay, so let's flush out the body, guys, before we perceive, proceed with the actual uh, pause. So the body, I always have troubles with guinea, uh, troubles. I always have trouble with guinea pig bodies because they seem very easy to do because it's just like an oval shape, but actually I have, like, I can't, it, it gets really hard. It gets hard to get it right. So we have the circle, he looks a bit weird, he's got a big head, but what we have to do now is flesh out the general shape. So here, what I do, um, when you really look at the photo, you can see that there's actually some sort of shading happening around this part. So there's another kind of half circle within it. And we can just already kind of start to sketch that in. So there's a bit of a bump at the top of his head here, or his body, and it goes down like like this more or less <laughs> this is not the way like that 
And now the butt, the butt area, we can erase the lines and we can re-sketch it. So again, remembering where you just drew your lines. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not gonna get this. Okay, sorry guys if I have to erase this like 20 times. Uh, his, his, th like their butts are rather flat actually, like from this angle, it's kind of flat. It's a bit round in shape, but it's rather flat. So we're gonna do kind of a flat butt here. <laughs> he looks so weird. <laughs> Guys, I know, it looks like a potato with legs. Just give it a second. <laughs> I have to flush it out. Gotta flush it out, guys. Gotta flush it out. Am I eating strawberries at the same time? Alright. He's got a bit of fat that, like, overhangs his foot here, so we're just gonna leave it like this. Like that. I think his head is huge compared to his body. What is going on? What did I do? This is not right. He's looking thick. Yeah, he is looking thick. Okay, let's fix this. I think he's got like a monster... Okay, wait. <laughs> So, let's see if I could somehow extend these lines. Maybe, maybe I made his body too small. Now he's too square. Ah, you see my struggles, guys. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. I think that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I missed the beginning. Rewind. Yeah, for all of those who are just joining, like all of you guys who are just joining, I am recording this. I'm not recording it. I'm all of my streams are saved as archives in, in a playlist, and you can learn as I draw. Um, so you can rewatch it anytime. All right. So we've officially extended his body, which means I have to fix this line as well. We're gonna go back and just fix this pudgy little circle here and again I am definitely sketching with the pattern for I really do like sketching with um, the fur pattern in mind so I already start you can see my lines are quite jaggedy this just tells me where the fur should be and kind of the pattern of the fur I already like to to draw in that respect rather than just straight curvy lines we're gonna do a little paw here and the paw is barely sticking out of his body. And guinea pig paws are pretty much like sausage fingers. If you really look at them, they're kind of like pointed sausage fingers. I don't know. It, they look kind of funny. They look kind of funny. <laughs> How is your Saturday going? My Saturday is going well. I got a new washing machine and I had to clean my bathroom. And I had some time to read a book. So I had a good, I had a pretty relaxing sa Saturday. <laughs> I hope your Saturday is well too. Going well. And the paw looks a bit funny. I think I drew his butt too big here. Let's re erase that. Alright. Now let's draw his front paws. We erase the guidelines again. And the front paws here, they, they look a bit funny. So we're gonna draw them. Again, they look like chubby sausages. We're gonna draw the top of his paw in a curve following the guideline of like the oval shape that you drew earlier and <laughs> sausage fingers yes now we get ready so when you're drawing guinea pig hands think of sausages oh gosh i can't i'm so bad at this they need to be bigger they need to be bigger Ah, guinea pig fingers. No, oh, I can't. I can't draw guinea pig fingers. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> you guys know how, how bad I am with paws. Let's just do his underbelly here. So his belly sits on the ground and sort of extends here. Like, 
Oh. He's a bit of a chunky he's a bit of a chunky monkey. I think he's a chunky. He's a chunky guy. Mmm, muffins. What kind of muffins are you eating? I have dark chocolate and strawberries. Alright, so let's finish the little finger thing here. The little sausage finger. It's a little bit of a little one on this edge. Okay, like that. And again, we want to redraw the chest hair in a V shape because a lot of it's going to be shadow under here. So we're going to be drawing with shadow. And we're going to draw the other paw. Luckily for me, this paw here is pretty much in the shadows. I mean, half of it at least. Um, but that does that's no excuse for not drawing it properly, guys. So we want to draw it properly the first time around. We're going to draw the curve at the very top. Oh gosh, sausage fingers. Think of sausage fingers. <laughs> oh, okay, let's do it, let's do it. This is, one day guys, one day guys, I will get so good at drawing guinea pig fingers. Today is not the day though. All right, give me a second, give me a second. I totally failed that. Um, we're gonna fix it with the coloring. <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Um, there's also a bit of a pattern underneath his chin, so we're just gonna gently outline where the white will appear. Like that. You know, fix his eye. Something that I also like to do with the eyeballs, I do like to already highlight where the highlight of the eye will be, like the little shine on the eye. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a circle within there, and it's gonna basically show where it should be going. And we're gonna extend the eye like that. All right, the guinea pig's looking chunky, he's looking fresh. Looking like a gangster. And I think he's gonna look much better once we color him in. I'm not really happy about the top of his head. I hope you guys are drawing along. I think it's, it's the whole point. <laughs> exactly, Aya. That's okay. It's part of the process to make mistakes and correct them. Exactly. That's why I'm showing you guys this as well. I think it's really fun. I, I really want to do these art lessons and show you guys how to draw animals. It would be really cool. This is my first one. It's kind of weird. I don't really know what I'm doing, but yeah. Uh. Bunny, are you going to be coloring this? Yes, sir. I really want to color them in. I think I'm going to color it with Copic markers and a little bit of the polychromos, like the colored pencils. Okay, so we drew the first one. Now there's number two. We're gonna draw the second guinea pig. Oh my gosh, I think I'm a bit ambitious with this because uh, this one's gonna be hard, guys. Do you want to see guinea pig number two? I'm actually really nervous to draw this one. I've never drawn a hairy guinea pig before, like one that has like really long hair. So we're gonna go ahead and attempt it today in today's live stream. I hope you guys can follow. Again, I have all of the reference lines listed it on my Facebook fan page. So if you guys check out my Facebook, it's down in the video description. I do post like the, the photos that I'm, I'm drawing and also um, the guidelines that I do, like where the circle should be, where the, the lines should be. So I'm just gonna pop this, this little gentleman here. I'm not gonna get rid of the other guinea pig yet. So we're just gonna pop him in. And we're gonna put him at the top. This is guinea pig number two. And it's up to you guys if you wanna draw along with this one. If you're still working on the first one, it's completely fine. Um, but here's Mr. Mr. Crazy Hair. And we're just gonna move this along a little bit. I'm probably gonna move my photo a little bit lower. All right. <laughs> So, let's try number two, shall we? 
I'm really nervous for this one. I was actually not even debating whether I should do it or not. Uh, but let's go ahead. Ah. I have to pop him up. See you. Ah, there he is. I'm, I'm so, I'm so nervous to do him. Okay, let's do it. Ah. His, okay, he's gonna be kind of like hiding behind the other one a little bit, like his back leg. So, okay. The second pig looks like it went Super Saiyan. Yeah, <laughs> actually. Hello from Belgium. Hi, Kaylee, welcome. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we're gonna draw the very first circle, which is gonna be his head shape. I'm actually really nervous. And I think he might be a bit smaller than the this This one's pretty big. I think it drew him really, really big. Uh, but we're just gonna draw. Ooh, lopsided circle. I'm just gonna draw the first circle. Ah! You can see my circles are not perfect whatsoever. I might have drew his head a little too small. Nah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So we've got the first circle. We have, um... His ear is kind of hidden. Oh, before we draw his ear, we're gonna draw the angle of his face where his facial features should appear he is looking up on an angle which is even more difficult so we're gonna try like that okay so you guys following so far i'm sorry if i'm drawing this so fast <laughs> it's okay alonja my circles are also very bad It's just something that, like, takes a while to, to learn to get used to it, but you will get used to it. I'm not used to it yet, though. Alright. We have the second circle, or the second line here, where his eye will be. I drew it a bit too big, though. And the eye will appear directly on top of this circle. And again, his eye shape is a bit different than just the rounded one we did earlier. It has a bit of an angle, or like a bit of um, I don't really know, it's kind of like an oval shape with triangles. I don't know if that makes sense. But you can just draw an oval shape, no problem. Like that. Okay, that's where his eye will go. You're going too fast! I'm so sorry! I know, the thing is I can't just sit and like... It's hard to give these art lessons. But you can definitely replay the video on slow mode as well. Will the body fit into the space? I don't know. I think he's gonna appear like... A little bit behind. His leg will appear like here maybe? Okay, so we have this. Now his little body... His body is in the shape of... An oval it's kind of like an it's not really an egg it's more of an oval we start off with the behind and it will wait this is a little too high the oval should intersect between directly below oh my gosh wait so the oval should cross about the same length of the um, this line here, where you draw where the where the eyeball is. I don't know if this makes sense, but check. I'm gonna just draw it, and I'll show you. Like that. Ah, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, you know, like I tell you guys to do these guidelines to to start planning the shape of the body and whatnot, but I you get to a point where you don't need to do it as much, so maybe only for the face or the, the plane of the face. Um, but in terms of the body, I typically freestyle it, freehand it. I don't, um, 
I will only use this very rarely at this point, but that's just something that you really, really learn. I think I drew this way too low. But here we can draw ovals for the general shape of where the legs will appear. <laughs> Does it look funny? And we'll draw um, another one here. And he's extending his back paw, so he's doing a fancy pose, actually. Does he look funny? He looks funny, eh? Yeah. Thank you, Lynette. <laughs> All right, all right, let's proceed. We're gonna really flesh this out. And he has kind of like a camel hump on his back, like his fur is totally sticking out. Um, so we can already start to sort of sketch the outline of this here. We're just gonna use curves for now. So again, check out my Facebook fan page for um, the reference lines that I'm using for this. You will see that I posted it there. And his hair will go all the way. He's got kind of a mohawk, so I'm really loving this guinea pig right now. Okay, so that looks rather silly. I do I, I do know that. <laughs> now, the next thing... Ooh, I forgot to draw his nose. We're just gonna draw the triangle shape for his nose. It should be approximately... It's a bit higher up on the... Um, the line that I drew. Because his mouth, you can see the lip here. And then he'll have his little mouth approximately here. We're gonna fix this up much, much better. But this is how um, how I would have, or how I would draw it. Okay, strawberry mix. <laughs> Thank you, my fang, my fang, my fang. Thank you. <laughs> These types of streams are so much more chilled. Uh, I hope that this is okay as a stream. Typically I just color. You guys watch me color, but this time I'm actually drawing something from scratch and I'm so nervous because it's like it usually this to get perfect, like I have to train myself in order not to um what's it called? Like I will typically keep reworking it and reworking it until it's the way that I want and I have to really get out of that bad habit because it wastes so much time like I could end up drawing something for a couple hours and it would only, only be the sketch and it's not very fun to show you guys this um, so I'm hoping that th these sort of lessons will help you I was gonna I think it's gonna help me too all right so I had a strawberry break <laughs> Turning out so bad for me. Keep trying, keep trying. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so I forgot to draw the shape of the ear. Now this little piggy, his ear is pretty much hidden within all of the, the shapes of his fur. So we're just going to draw generally where the curve should be. And again, I use half circles to em put emphasis on this. Also on this end, I'm going to do another very smaller half circle. Um, I think he's looking pretty good. I think... I don't know about you guys. <laughs> okay, so let's start filling it in. Now we're gonna erase some of these lines we drew and we're gonna fill in the shapes of the fur, the shapes of the pattern, uh, uh, like the, the fur pattern. And the first thing I'm gonna do is his face. And in terms of this guinea pig, it's a bit hard to draw the shape of the, the, the body because it's hidden by so much fur. Um, and in this case, I just really focus on the fur rather than the actual shape because the shape is beneath the fur um, and it's the fur that counts. So he's very, very uh, styled. Like he has a lot of crazy hair happening. Um, and we're gonna start. So the first thing I do is I assess the photo and I note where the pattern of the fur is. So I typically start around the mouth nose area in these cases. So we can already see that there's a bit of white. There's, there's a break in the pattern here. So there's orange and then there's white. And we can just gently sketch out the curve of the fur pattern. And it's gonna lead, it's gonna be a little bit like this. And this will establish the shape of the face, more or less. We're gonna erase this line 
and we're gonna cur curve it. Like a that. It, this is a really hard one. Actually, it's quite difficult for me as well to understand how to draw it. So this is kind of a complex level, I would I would say. If you guys can draw this one, then I'm I'm like I would be super impressed. And now um, we're gonna also draw the general pattern on the the nose going up to the forehead. <laughs> My drawing looks like a mouse robot. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. Sierra. Thank you. <laughs> So, we're gonna draw again the shape on top of his little nose area, forehead area. And this, this fur is much lighter in color, which is why I kind of established different layers here. So we're gonna draw the very lightest layer, which is the top layer. I hope that this is making sense to you guys, I don't really know how to explain this. And I'm just using really sh short pencil strokes to emphasis the pattern of fur. We're gonna bring this down this way. It always looks odd at this point when there is no fur or detailing. Yeah, definitely. I have the same issue. Um, and I'm probably gonna go back and fix some of the, like this one I already see things I could fix already, but we can, I can tell you exactly what those things are afterwards. So you can learn from my mistakes as well. Although typically you need to learn from your own mistakes, so it's no it's no no problem if you guys make mistakes. At least you learn something. So we're gonna bring this up towards his lips and we're gonna extend this outwards. This is really tough. Uh, we're just gonna extend this outwards. Like <laughs> Like that. <laughs> um, oof, oof, baby, this is tough. Like that. IGB, uh, are you going to color it with your polychromos? I got them thanks to your video. Yes, I will be coloring it. I believe with polychromos, I'm not sure, I think a combination of markers and pencil crayon, but that's really good to know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Nico. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if, I don't think my husband's on Discord either. Okay, so we're gonna raise these lines here too, and we're gonna start to play with the fur as well. Oh no! Ah. The fur is pretty wild here on the cheek, it's always going upwards. So we're going to kind of mimic the same pattern. It is pretty hard, at this point it's really hard to see, which is why I tell you guys not to give up. If it's looking weird at the beginning, don't give up because it's gonna come to life once you color it. At this point, it's just getting the the line work correct. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is dry. <coughs> Woo! Okay. Oh, why is this chocolate? That's it, guys. Hello! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna continue to draw the fur. Don't don't worry about putting too much detail at this point either. Again, the detail work will come later on with the actual coloring. Here's where it's gonna be pretty fun because the top of his hair is a little bit like mohawk formation, so we can have a little bit of fun here. His ear pops out from here and then beneath the ear. So we, we drew this line here to indicate where the top head, like the, the fur of on top of the head will 
will be. And we can erase this. We can still see it very faintly, which is what you want. And now you can start to play with the hair. We're going to do something like a little hair mohawk here. So it like that. And we are going to extend the fur to his ear area. Now this ear on this side is pretty much hidden behind all of the fur. So we're just going to raise it and put fur in its position and then we're going to redraw the ear where the half circle was. Like that. Now right now I'm feeling like his eyes and his nose is getting lost in all of the fur definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a thicker line around the eyeball and highlight where the highlight part of his eye will appear. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna redraw the bottom shape of his mouth, define the chin area. So we've got the nose. Actually, before we do that, I want to do the nose because the nose is bothering me. This little guinea pig's nose is rather brown in color, so we don't really have to. We could basically just draw where the nostrils will be. Anything else will be part of the coloring job. Yeah, okay. Like that. Erase, erase, erase. Now we can kind of outline the shape of the, like his, his like neck area. Um, a lot of this is white, which you can basically only see the shape once I color it in. But we can already outline these sort of areas. We're going to do the same with the next part of his body here. And actually, if you guys are wondering what I'm currently outlining, I'm basically just outlining the shadowy parts of the fur. This determines the body shape for me, where I can see where I will draw like the shadowy areas. Um, that's where I will outline something. Um, let's Before we progress with this, let's focus on his body. So the fur extends outwards this way. like that and now we're going to be drawing the white part of his body um and this is a pretty good indication on how to draw the upper part of his body or like the the front part of his body so we use the white fur to indicate where this is cut off from the orange um there's a patch of orange here. We just want to highlight this patch of orange as well. Oh boy. All right, all right. Hello. Hi, video. Hello, welcome. We're going to progress with the back here. <laughs> Swirly rainbow. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Gonna race, erase, erase, erase. All right. And he's got a fancy back leg. Like his back is a bit. It, the, the fur on his back, like his butt, is pretty flat, so this is actually quite easy to draw. Um, you can just kind of extend the leg outwards, draw the curves, pay attention to the curves of the leg and the, the behind area. Like that. And his leg will pop out. I think I might have drew him a little bit. Wait. Wait a second, guys. Wait, 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 wait. No, I think that's okay. Okay. I might extend his butt a little bit further because right now I'm not so sure if this is working out the way I wanted to. We're just gonna gently sketch 
the direction of the fur as well. And there's a there's some pieces of fur that is actually like lying on the ground. So we kind of want to try to draw this. Like a lot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna change his butt. <laughs> so let's change that booty. Yeah. There we go. I think that's much that's a much nicer shape. Alright, alright, alright. And now we've got the Yeah, this one's super chunky compared to this one. He's like beefcake. I, let's call him beefcake. I think his name is beefcake. That's that's his name. And this one needs a name. I don't know what his name should be. <laughs> I've got chocolate all over my hands. <laughs> all right. Let's proceed. Okay, so his paw here, we've got, we have to draw the fat sausage fingers again. Ugh. We're gonna draw the top curve of his paw, and this little hand is actually kind of spread out like a starfish. <laughs> it looks so cute. Ah! <laughs> Star <laughs> okay. Ooh, I also love Milka. Milka is really good. It's a really good Milka, Milka. I like Milka, I like Kinder. Um, what else do I like? <clears throat> I actually, I don't know, I like, I like every chocolate. Like I love, I love chocolate in general. Ch chocolate to me is like, the best. <laughs> this is really helpful. Yeah, thanks guys. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now I've got to draw this little paw here. And this paw is a bit weird. It's, it's kind of sticking out and it actually has his claws out. It's like... Rah. Oh, I don't... <laughs> this one is literally beefcake. <laughs> okay, I am probably gonna go back and fix a little bit more beefcake here. I think beefcake needs to be fixed a little bit. Let's get beefcake's reference photo back up. Yeah, he's huge. He's really big. Okay, let's make some minor adjustments. So what I can see already is the top of his head should be fixed make it a little bit less huge we're just gonna mend that like that I think that his body is a little bit too big maybe he's kind of on an angle he looks a bit he just overall looks weird compared to this one Maybe I should make his butt a bit smaller. Um, we're gonna mend the cheek a little bit to bring it in. I'm gonna do some mild plastic surgery here. And his back can probably be fixed as well. What eraser am I using? I am using a Faber-Castell 
Wait, kneadable art eraser. So it's these sort of like gummy-like erasers and they work so well. I really, really enjoy them. It's actually the first time like this year, no, what was it? 2016 was the first year that I have ever used them. I see them quite often in um, like art, in university, I was studying design. A lot of people were using them and I couldn't, I didn't know why. I ended up buying one for the first time and I just fell in love and I was like, oh my God, what was I missing? all these years okay boys and girls so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit okay I'm gonna zoom out we're gonna I'm just gonna quickly assess the photograph or the drawing that I did because I, it's a bit hard to see right now Wait. give me a second give me a second Porky Moustache! Welcome! Okay, there you go. Focus should be fine. I hope it's focused now. Oh, we've got guinea pigs! Look at that! Okay! <laughs> thumbnail! Yeah, we should probably do the thumbnail. So, this is basically my approach to drawing animals in actual live... Uh, like this is what I do before every stream. I will typically just take the time to draw it um, Flesh it out before I color it and actually when you guys join me in my streams typically you will see this um, As a starting point and then I start to color it, but this is how I basically take my approach to everything. I think that it is I think that it's I'm actually quite happy with them. This one could use some improvement. I think it's a little bit lopsided uh, I wonder- oh, wait, I think there's something I can do to fix that. I don't know if that did anything. Ugh. Ugh. But I think, generally speaking, I think we can start to probably color. Let's start to color. Or shall I ink them? I think I'm gonna ink them. We're, do we're gonna do a little bit more illustrative for this sort of design rather than um, realistic. I think illustrative is also really fun. And what I like to do before is I like to take my fine liners and just ink them. I have to find them though. Wait, where is it? So the fine liners that I'm using is uh, is the Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen. I love these. These work really nice. We're gonna use size S for small. I forgot I had T, guys. What? All right. Oh, my T is cold. Blech. Oh, my Skype is ringing. <gasps> Wait. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> I forgot my Skype was on, guys. Give me a second. Is that what you guys were hearing? Oh, no. All right, so let's start. We're gonna start with the inking job. We're gonna do a bit more cartoonish, I think, at least. We're gonna start off with this little, this little dude. I always start off with the eyeballs. It's just the easiest thing to ink, really. Um, usually I will do pretty much straightforward inking. I will not really play around with the curves as much, but I have been really experimenting with this as of late. So uh, we can definitely play around with some of the curvations or the thickness of the curves. And when you're inking, you really want to keep your hand as steady as possible. And I know that's not as easy as it sounds, and it takes a bit of practice, to be honest with you. Nah. IGB, I think I might post this guinea 
drawing on Instagram when it's finished. Just wanted you to know if it's okay if I tag you in it. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. I love seeing all of your drawings. And if I inspire you guys to draw and you want to show me your drawings, please, please do. I really, really like it. <laughs> it's so nice. I love seeing your art. fun to play around with the thicknesses of the lines I really I have been really enjoying this more often like lately as of late it's been quite fun to play around with inking what kind of tea are you drinking bunny I'm drinking Moroccan mint because actually before this live stream, I was really, really nervous. I don't know why. I kind of had like a anxiety attack. I have no idea. It just really hit randomly. And usually when that happens, T will definitely calm me down. So. All right. Now we're gonna make these paws a bit thicker in terms of the inking. A bit darker on the top because there's a lot of shadow and also in between the paws or in between the fingers ah! look at his chubby belly oh my god so I think uh Okay, like that. Now this one here is SB, SB, and it's kind of like a brush marker and it's so nice to do some inking with it. I really, really like this one. The one that I use the most is S and it's just a regular fine, fine tip. And this one is the brush. What's my favorite tea? Yeah, my favorite tea is definitely uh, mint, actually. I really love mint tea. Anything to do with mint is... Especially when it's fresh mint from the garden, which I typically grow in the spring, summertime. I will have a huge garden full of mint, all kinds of different types. I really enjoy it. What's one thing you need to improve on as an artist? Like myself, what's one thing I should improve on? Um, to me, is actually learning... Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Forget the word now. Uh, learning um, anatomy. That's what I need to learn on. That's what I definitely suggest to do as a beginner's tip. Okay, let's outline the little nostrils and the lips. Like that? Yeah, there we go. We're gonna do the top of his head. Haha, <laughs> this ear. No, the ear looks so bad. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. We're gonna fix that. Oh, no. I totally did the wrong curve there. All right, all right, we've got this, we've got this. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, we got, we got uh, Beefcake here. He's pretty much almost inked. I'm going to avoid inking the inside. I know I did it for the ears a little bit, but the inside... I really don't want to ink between the difference, like difference between the orange and the white fur. We're just gonna leave it like that. 
Leave it like that, because this is where we're going to start to color. Now, I kind of want to make some of the lines thicker, so we're going to go ahead with the brush marker here that I have. And just play around with some of the shadowy areas, or like the thickest parts of... Like where I would like the thick parts of the, the lines to be. Probably going to add some more here, but we're going to wait. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start to color him in. Let's just add a little bit more. Like that! Bunny, can you draw on your window with charcoal marker like you said a few videos ago? Yes, um, I'm waiting for it to become spring because I like to draw on my windows. I have to wash my windows and I have to do all kinds of things and uh, spring cleaning and I'm definitely going to be doing it for the springtime. It's definitely one of the plans for upcoming videos. Okay, so before we color, we've outlined the general areas or we did basically the outline job. And now what I want to do is just gently erase again the line work that we had done. At this point, you want to clean up your image. You want to clean it up, but you also want to kind of like, for myself, I think it's very helpful if I don't erase the lines as best as possible. Like if I could still see it a little bit, that's still okay to me because I want to see where the pattern of the fur is. But on the outside here, you want to really erase it because then it's sticking outside of your drawing. And if you ink it with Copic marker, for example, you cannot erase the lines afterwards. They will be shown beneath your ink. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to start off with the soft sun color. We have the soft sun color. I should probably change my thumbnail though, like like uh, Nico was saying earlier. Give me one second, guys. We're gonna change the thumbnail. Sorry if the stream freezes for a second. Okay, so pig number no. my piggy where is my piggy where can she be okay so I've changed the thumbnail okay so let's get back to coloring we're gonna be coloring with Copic markers um, for the initial coloring job and then we're gonna be adding more detail to the like the softer whispery whispery wispy parts of the guinea pig we're gonna be adding a uh, pencil crayon and that's mostly to kind of give the detail of the fur much better. I'm just gonna erase this. Ah, there's more pencil. Okay, so let's begin, boys and girls. Let's begin. So for those of you guys wondering what color I'm using, I am using the soft sun color. It's a beautiful color, a bit of a yellow tone, um, but it's a nice sort of beige-ish, beige, beige color. And when you're drawing, or when you're, when you're, yeah, when you're drawing with the markers, and you're drawing a guinea pig, you also, or an animal, you also want to generally draw in the same direction as the fur. Just like I, what I tell you guys all the time with the Faber-Castell polychromos, you want to also sort of try to emulate that fur movement with the Copic markers. And the brush tip is much easier in a way to do that because you can get really pretty like down in the fine details with the brush tip. It's much thinner at the at the end, so it's just easier to draw with. And as you draw from the base of the eye up to the top of the head, you want to lighten up your pressure because the top of the head is a little bit more whiter compared to 
around the eye, for example. So I'm not going to draw too much in that direction. Okay, like of that. Ha! He's gonna look like a little cartoon pig. Okay, bye Nico. Thanks for joining. And we're gonna draw the other side of the face and have fun drawing. <laughs> and we're gonna do the other side of the face. And again, follow your marker with the movement of the fur. So whatever direction the fur goes, try to do the same with your marker. Don't just draw in one straight line, because this will actually make a difference in the end. Um, same goes when you're drawing with pencil crayon. So follow the movement of the fur. Like that. What number does this Copic has? Half, um, this number is E21. E21. Okay, now we're gonna draw the top. I think his head is cut off a little bit. Like I redrew the top of his head, but it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit flat now, but whatever. It'll still be good. Okay, and we're gonna extend the Copic a little bit under here as well. This is going to go below his cheeky area. And this is much darker in tone, and we're going to darken this up later on with another color. Or a second layer of the soft sun. But here you can just definitely fill it in quite, quite strong. Like that. Are markers necessary for a good fur effect? I would say no, to be honest with you. I have been known to just use pencil crayon for fur without the need for actual um, markers. I also use watercolor and pencil crayons, but in the end, I typically always bring in the pencil crayons. It's just It just gives that nice texture that you're looking for when you're drawing fur. A texture that's really, really tough to achieve, I find, with just markers, for example. Now, this is the tricky part, because here you've got a lot of different uh, tones of this color. So there's a bit of lighter sections and then there's sort of darker sections. Darker sections. So here you can see, well, it's going to become clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the bottom up here. And remember earlier when we were drawing, there was a curve here that I drew to kind of outline where the darkest shade would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to start from the bottom and we're going to just go along with this curve. And we'll, we'll flick the wrist again, guys, flick the wrist if you want to make that nice gradient from dark to light. Flick the wrist like that and follow the curvation. And this is going to create some sort of uh, kind of like highlights within the fur. I hope it's showing up. So you're going to see, I have to rework this area here at the bottom. Actually, I could probably do that now. But you can see that there's going to be a bit of a, like a nice shine to the fur. And that's how you basically establish um, the differences between light and darker values in the fur, especially when you're drawing with marker. Um, so we're gonna do the same. We're just gonna. This is a bit hard. I have to actually turn the paper. Let's turn the paper. Ah. I'm gonna turn the paper. Turn the paper. So now we're going to bring in some of the color again here, work on the color. Basically just keep repeating the flick motion. I'm going to darken this up here as well. A 
Like that. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not coloring the lines anymore. Ah! Okay. So. Now we're gonna finish the little butt here. Now the butt is pretty much the same technique. You have to watch out where the highlights are. And where those highlights are, you wanna keep the paper white for now. So again, you use the flicking motion. I will start from the bottom up because there's a bit of a white fur here. Um, so we wanna really keep that there and fill in the soft sun color and the rest of the backside here. Looks a bit funny, eh? Okay, so we, we have the initial color down. I could start to fill in a bit more. Like that. Now what we do, since we got the first layer of color, we're going to add um, more layers. And that's gonna establish like the contrast and bring a little bit more realism to your drawing. So we're gonna take the same color. I like to apply shadows with the same color. And we're gonna go back and fill in some of the darker spots of the guinea pig. And um, ideally we're gonna use this color for now and then we're gonna bring in a darker color that is very similar in tone and draw on these areas as well. And here you want to really assess the photos that you're using. If you're using a reference photo, for example, you want to really check out to see where the darkest tones are. Um, sometimes you won't even need to use a darker color. You could just use the same one and just layer on top of layer. But in this case, I will need to use the soft sun in certain areas, like the top of his forehead here. But I will need to use a darker color, like the sand color around his ears, because there's a lot of shadows there. This is where you, you can basically assess what you think would work. <laughs> Yours is so cute and chubby, mine's way too grumpy. <laughs> yeah, grumpy, grumpy piggies are also cute. <laughs> All right. So, the next color I'm bringing in is sand, which is E33, um, and it's a much darker tone um, to the soft sun that I was using, and I really like this one, it works really well, it's a beautiful color. We're going to go ahead and bring in this color around the eyes and the ears, and this is the darkest part of the guinea pig, and also beneath the sort of like paw area here we're also going to add. Let's go ahead and do that. What are you eating? I'm eating dark chocolate and strawberries. Mm. Best. And I'm also going to fill this color in into the ears. The ears we're going to have to darken up a lot more, but for now the color will be sort of the undertone. And that's totally fine. I think I'm going to really do the detail of the ears with pencil crayon at this point. Like that. And we're going to bring in the same color on the other side. <laughs> Fusel, Fusel ding, welcome. Yes. Dark chocolate and strawberries. I I just ended up having both ingredients in my house and I was just like, okay, done deal. Chocolate and strawberries is the best. OK. 
Okay, we're gonna bring back the soft sun and we're gonna keep adding a bit more shadows here. Try to blend these two colors together a little bit more. Although it, the blending is really not necessary in this case because there's a lot of um, contrast. Um, yes, <laughs> actually my strawberries are kind of soggy right now. Um, I did not realize I was already streaming for an hour and a half. Holy smokes. Mm. IJB, do you feel like you found your own style already? No, I, I don't I don't think I have. I'm not so sure and I don't even know when I will find my own style, to be honest with you. I feel like it's gonna be a very long journey. There's certain things I really wanna do and accomplish, and I think once I accomplish those things, I feel like I would have found my own style. But until then, I mean in a way I do have my own style, I guess. But I don't know, that's a really hard question to answer. So again, we're going to bring back the sand to the darkest areas of the guinea pig. So basically, we're going to bring this color down beneath his chin area now. Like that. This is a bit hard here, actually. What paper are you using? I believe I've listed the paper Oh no, I didn't list the paper down below in the description. Oh, sorry about that. I am using... Where is it, actually? I'm using this type of paper. Dollar Rani is the brand, and it's fine grain, um, heavyweight, 120 pounds paper, and it's for um, pencil, for painting, like watercolor as well, and acrylic, I believe, and ink and pastel. Um... And yeah, it's really great paper. I really, really like it. it. Works really well. It's very nice. It's like an off-white color. Okay, so... Just gonna bring back the soft sun once more. We're gonna try to get this color in here better. So some of you guys are saying he has no chin and that is very true at this moment. He does have no chin. So we're going to fix this by bringing in, I really wish I don't have the cool or the warm grays and the Copic Chows. I need to buy them, I don't have them. Um, so we're gonna be using cool gray instead. Because I only have one warm gray and it's quite dark. It's W3, which is warm gray um, number three. But yeah, for like typically when I draw animals, I always use warm gray colors because it just works much better in terms of the tone, like the the color of the the skin. Like when you're drawing animals with white fur, typically I use warm gray rather than cool gray. It just looks much more natural. So. You're from Germany, aren't you? Are you going to Carnival? If you do, what is your costume? I'm going as Mad Hatter. I think you would look great as an angel because you are one. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, I am not going to Carnival. I've never been to Carnival and I don't really know, like, I, I, I don't know what I would go as. Like, Mad Hatter is pretty cool. But I've never experienced Carnival. I know a lot of Germans go from Berlin to... Oh, where is it held? I forget the city that it's held. I can't remember what the city was. I know a lot of Germans go there though. Like from Berlin specifically. Ah, this is definitely not the right color for this, guys. I definitely need a 
warm gray. I might just bring bring in pencil crayon for this. Okay, so for the mouth, I am using the Fruit Pink E02. This is the mouth uh, color, like around the nose and the mouth, and it's a really nice color between, it's pinkish, you can use this for skin tone as well. And yeah, it just looks nice. It's kind of like a beigey pink color. Like that, like so. And we're also gonna draw in the lips as well. Yeah, so because I don't have warm gray, we're just gonna be using pencil crown for the uh, nose and under the chin area. So we're just gonna get these out. Warm gray number one. And I am using Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil crayons. I think these will suffice. Like I have the entire Worm Grey collection, but um, I'll use Worm Grey 1, 2, and 3 uh, for the fur around his mouth, his nose, and everything else. Thank you, Swirly Hamster! Okay, so... Let's start... Oh, wait. Ah! I need to sharpen! I don't know all of the color codes for the Copic markers. I only go by the names. I really like... I don't know why. I know what people... I think, obviously, you need to know the color codes, especially for refills and whatnot. Um, but I don't know them. I don't know them by heart. <laughs> Probably because I'm new to the whole Copic thing. Alright, alright, let's put green. And when you're coloring with pencil crayon, guys, make sure to sharpen, sharpen, sharpen those pencils. That's how you get the fine detail work in the fur. Definitely sharpen. This will definitely make a huge difference. Because if you work with dull pencils, it's just you won't get the nice definition you really need when you're drawing animals. How's your day been, Bunny? Yeah, my day has been well. I mean, it has been really nice. I'm in it for a long night tonight, though, because I really want to work on stuff, other things than art. But yeah, I had a good day. We did some cleaning, which was the long overdue. <laughs> Doesn't sound very exciting, but that's, you know, story of your life once you're an adult, to be honest with you. Kind of sucks. <laughs> His mouth looks weird. We're gonna darken this up a lot here. Underneath his chin area. <laughs> How's father and money? mother bunny father and mother bunny i haven't skyped with them yesterday so i have to skype with my parents today i have no idea how they are i think my mom said she was sick so i don't know we shall see we shall see i will definitely skype with them after this live stream though well thanks for asking <laughs> For those of you guys who are just joining the stream, I did draw these two guinea pigs from scratch, so you can definitely rewind the uh, stream and see how I drew them, sort of like an art lesson. His underbelly is really tough to draw, actually. What I want to do also is bring in some of the pencil crayon for the fur, so we're gonna take this color. I don't think I have the proper colors. Oh yeah, here it is. The raw umber. Ah. Ah, 
Hello, Scorp. <laughs> I just wanted to share, I was drawing Sombra from Overwatch with a pencil. It came kind of okay, just the outlines, and then filling the w with watercolor happened. That was a really bad decision. But did you learn something from it? Because that's the most important part. If you think it was a bad decision, you probably learn from your mistakes. And next time you probably do it better but i think that's the whole point right is to make mistakes you have to make mistakes in order to get better that's like the only way you can really get ahead in the art industry gotta make these mistakes no one is born with the power to just draw like a beautiful magical wizard no one is born like that you just gotta you just gotta learn and make mistakes so if you made mistakes then i'm very very proud <laughs> i'm i'm proud for you Proud of you, I should say. So right now, the color I'm using is raw umber, and this is Faber Castell, the polychromos. And we're gonna get really nitty gritty here into the details, especially around the ears, the fur around the ears, and in the actual ear itself, and underneath his body a little bit better. I will update the thumbnail once I finish this little guy here. Okay, let's do his ear on this side as well. Whoa! It's a bit tough, actually. <laughs> exactly, I can't pronounce your name in Russian. Privyet. You've made a good point. Kids are learning with mistakes. When they try to walk and fall, they always stand up and try again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Or ma'am, I don't know if you're a girl or a guy, but yes, very, very true. That's how you learn. Don't be ashamed that you make mistakes. Everyone will do it. And if you think that the greatest artists out there have not made mistakes on the way, then you're definitely wrong. It's a, it's a huge learning experience. You should be happy if you make mistakes. Because <laughs> you're like, yeah, look, I know what to do next time. Okay, we're gonna bring in some sepia. We're, we're using dark sepia at this point, so we're gonna be using it for the very darkest parts of the ear here. We got some dark pot, dark spots. <laughs> I'm a girl. <laughs> nice Russian. I only know Korovka on er and Privyet. Privyet. That's all I know. I know a couple other words, but I'm not gonna say them. Ooh, 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 wrong color. You should do live streams more often. I try to do live streams as often as I can. I do work full time, so it's a bit hard. It's definitely definitely tough, but in the future that's definitely my plan. Next week, however, I will not have live streams because I will be in Iceland! I will be hiking and uh, going to see the nature, getting away from the computer. <laughs> I'll probably be do uploading a vlog though, my Icelandic vlog. Okay, let's fi fill in the eyeball. We're gonna start filling in the eyeball. Bye, Chloe. Thanks for stopping. Whoa! <laughs> His eye is so black now. <laughs> I think he's, he's slowly coming to life. I think slowly. How will you live, buddy? What do you mean? My 
Yeah, Julia. It looks better now that it has bad color. Yes, that's what I always tell you guys. Don't give up. If you're sketching something at first, it could look better when you color it. If you think you're like, oh, this is looking really bad. When you start to color it and add detail, it's going to start to look better. I'm trying to read your comments. You know, it's very hard to read the comments and draw at the same time. It's actually quite difficult. That's why I end up doing mistakes on my art <laughs> while I'm drawing, but that's totally fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the soft sun color into the edges of the white part of his face and the beige part of his face. And this is to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic in terms of the white fur because it was pretty much cut off really straight and the d it does not look good. So we're going to do the same on this side. Make it look a little bit more furry rather instead of like straight edge. Like a that. I'm new here. Welcome, Hazel. Do you use Coop markers? Coop? Copic? Ugh. I'm using Copics right now. I use all kinds of different markers. I, I really enjoy testing markers and trying new things and seeing which one is better than the other um, for the price. So right now I'm also using the Burnt Sienna. We're going to add a bit of this color into the ears. Um, because the ears, if you look really closely, it's a little bit like ginger. He has like ginger hair at this point. We want to add more emphasis of the orange in his fur as well. So we're going to use the Burnt Sienna. It's a pretty nice color. I really enjoy this color. Beautiful like auburn color almost. Like that. Wie viel Deutsch sprichst du? Ich kann viel Deutsch sprechen. Aber ich spreche nicht so gut, weil ich spreche Deutsch. Warte mal, ich spreche nicht immer Deutsch. Uh, ich spreche uh, bei meiner Arbeit und mit meinem Mann. Wir sprechen nur Englisch. So für mich ist ein bisschen schwer uh, Deutsch sprechen. Ist schwer für mich, weil ich I don't practice enough. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Do you know where to buy Copic markers? Um, it depends where you live. I, I really can't answer that because... Oh no! I dropped, my, I dropped my pencil crayon. There goes my pencil crayon. It really depends where you live because you would... I would rather say you check out your, your local art store. If your local art store doesn't have it, then definitely online. I buy a lot of things on Amazon. Amazon is my number one shopping uh, destination, to be honest with you. And I have also bought Copics from Amazon. But definitely check your local art store first because they should have it. It's a pretty popular brand and many stores carry it. Okay, I want to keep adding more definition to this white fur. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> what kind of job do you have where you can speak English all the time? I'm from Switzerland, but I prefer to speak English. Yo, Switzerland, I don't want to go to Switzerland. Switzerland looks like it's such a cool country. I'd love to go there. Um, but yeah, my job is international. So we have international customers, which means that we have to speak English. Um, like we deal with people from all over the world, so we don't have to speak German as We don't have to speak German at all actually, which is really nice So we have a pretty multicultural um, Company like employees My colleagues are pretty multicultural. They're from all over the world. So it's pretty cool I'm kind of going against the rules in terms of his, like the fur on his face right now, because uh, it's a bit too complicated to draw it all in detail. And the point is not to have so much realistic for this drawing. It's more so like 
um, a nice fun doodle. So we're not going to go too crazy with this right now. We're just going to have a little bit of fun. Have you ever been to Russia? Uh, I have never been to Russia. Although I would like to go see St. Petersburg. I would love to see it. Um, I do like the Russian culture. I think it's very like po <laughs> well how do I say it like I, I I love come there's a lot of poet poetry and literature and art that comes from Russia um, and they have such a beautiful there's such a beautiful culture behind it and I would like to go see those kind of those kinds of things have you ever been to England I have not been to England the as Emily knows that's one of my <laughs> biggest desires we're gonna draw the other little eyeball here. It's a bit. Oh, does that look weird? Wait. Ah. Wait a second. We're gonna fix the eye. We're gonna fix the eye. We're gonna fix the eye. The eye looks totally bizarre. Ah. <laughs> oh no. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's bring this in. Let's bring the dark shadow in closer to his eyeball. I think that's what's throwing me off right now. Did you ever went to Amsterdam? Yes. <laughs> I've been there twice and I'm planning on going a third time in the summer. I really hope I can go, but I'm probably gonna end up going somewhere else. They've been there many times. Well, twice, I've only been there twice. Hasn't been very many times. I love Amsterdam, love it. It's such a beautiful, beautiful city. And the Dutch people are so friendly. One of the friendliest, honestly. It's like, wow. And oh, I don't know, Amsterdam has the most delicious French fries I've ever eaten was from Amsterdam. Okay, guys, so for the little pause, we are going to be using, oh, wait a second. Uh, I want to darken up his lips. No, I think we're gonna use Where's my flesh tones? I want to darken up his lips with this color, which is the medium flesh. I use it for skin tone as well, um, but as well as like animal lips and mouths and lips and mouths is the same thing, but the nose and the lips, I use this quite often. So we're just gonna just quickly darken up this area here, especially the lip. But what I wanted to say before is actually the paws. So the paws need to be colored. And I'm going to use the exact same color as I did for the lips. We're going to use the fruit pink, which is E02. And yeah, we're going to color in the little pawsies here. Like so, like that. <laughs> we have to darken it up a lot. This is just a preliminary color. And we're gonna use a red, I think. So we're gonna use the Indian red. Cause the paws, yeah, this is okay. So we're gonna color in between the toes to add a bit of shadow. Have you ever been to British Columbia? Nope, I have not. I would love to go to British Columbia. I've never been. That one's rather pink, actually. Um, this one here, okay, wait a second. So we're gonna bring in the sepia tone again. Just darken up the paws here where there's shadows. Do the pin artist pens not smear at all with the Copics? I've been thinking about buying them, though I already have a lot of fine liners. They, um, they do smear a little bit. I've learned to control it. I haven't tried any, like I, okay, so I also have the Copic multi-liners, um, which you're supposed to use, I guess, with the, uh, like they're not supposed to smudge when you're using with Copic markers. Um, 
I actually, I don't even know why I'm not using these anymore. I think I stopped using these because I was working a lot with watercolor. So when I used these ones with watercolor, it just didn't work properly. They would always block and the ink wouldn't come out anymore. And I found that with the Faber Castell ones, they worked so much better with a little bit of damp paper for watercolor, which is why I still use them. Um, but they do smudge a little bit, so you have to be careful. And I don't know if it's because the ink was still dry or still wet. So there's all kinds of things you have to um, keep in con into consideration. But you can see, like I, I did the Copic marker on top of the fine liner here, and it didn't really smudge. It only smudged a little bit around the eyeball, but yeah, I don't, don't know. I, I'd, I'd suggest maybe investing in Copic ones if you're just using Copic, just in case. You know, better safe than sorry, right? Okay, I'm gonna update the thumbnail. Yes. Are you going to leave the fur like this or will you be drawing with pencils over the whole body? I'm going to be leaving the fur like this. I'm not gonna be putting too much detail. Just in some of the major areas, but I think otherwise it's supposed to be sort of like a character like a cartoonish version, not too much realism. I really like the aspect, it's kind of storybook like it's a mixture between realism and cartoon a little. All right, all right. I just want to add a few more details here. We're going to add a bit of gray to the mix. And last but not least, the white. So we've got the highlight. Let's see how that looks, right? Okay. Um, and the sort of final detail here, we're gonna erase the blue lines, but I want to add a shadow underneath the little piggy. The live stream doesn't have a set time limit? No, it doesn't. Just live streaming randomly. I basically stop when I want to stop, um, but generally speaking, I like to finish my drawings before. I try to avoid doing two parts because it's a bit hard. I like to have it all in one stream. Okay, so for the shadow underneath their paws, we're using the C1, which is the cool gray number one, the lightest cool gray you can get. Just to get a soft, I have to turn this a little bit around to get a soft um, kind of shadow here. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm gonna make it a bit darker underneath his belly, his belly. Uh, you know what I hate when your lips are super dry? and you accidentally bite skin off, and now it hurts. I hate that. It's the worst. Make the belly, let's make this darker here. thumbnail guys we're gonna update the thumbnail Ooh, let's update the thumbnail we're gonna draw the pig here the stream might freeze a little bit so don't worry Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. All right. Okay, last strawberries. My last strawberry slice. Oh.
Okay. Now we're gonna draw the next guinea pig. Yeah. Ooh, my previous stream is. I hope it's not live on. I hope it didn't save on my channel. Give me a second. I gotta check because I had a fail stream before this one. It just didn't work. So I just start this stream. to start second guinea pig this one's gonna be hard so we got easy guinea pig and then we got hard guinea pig guinea pig for wizards wizard pigs a wizard pig yes things first erase some of the lines now this one here this little guy I gotta ink him first so let's do that hardcore guinea pig yeah I totally smudged him too it's okay all right time for the hardcore hardcore pig how long will this guinea pig take I don't know I don't know we're already at a two-hour stream. I don't know how long this little guy will take. I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a background too, but I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. Maybe add some flowers here and there. Some butterflies. I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna start the inking job. This piggy is gonna be a bit... A bit hard. It's gonna be a bit hard. I'm gonna really try to go light on the inking here. Especially within the actual uh, like body area, so we want to keep it like this kind of style. Only ink on the outside. And the inside is going to be just colored with marker. Uh, hardcore! Ah. <laughs> uh. The butterfly on the nose would be so cute. I'm gonna do a hardcore big. Hardcore! I'm gonna draw his lips. You know guinea pig lips, they, ha they have such funny lips. They're actually quite big. prefer hardcore guinea pigs to the one that are like beefcake yeah uh beefcake here he's a funny little guy but i do also i do prefer the hardcore one i think hardcore they're much cuter beefcake looks like a potato he's a beefcake potato and you'll, no you'll notice that for this approach so we have here the smooth guinea pig his fur is quite smooth he doesn't really have um, too much fur sticking out in all different directions and this little guy here my actual inking like strokes are much different they're not straight one like nice curve they're gonna be very eclectic and kind of like all over the place and they're actually gonna mimic the fur so that's sort of the um yeah that's the concept where that's how I would differentiate between the two types of pigs so we've got hardcore which is the inking is pretty much not that straightforward while beefcake is pretty smooth the only thing would be is his butt like his butt would be pretty smooth also i updated the thumbnail it should it should have changed at least i hope it changed i'm not so sure like i thought it changed can you guys confirm if it changed or not? I'm pretty sure it did. I'm not so sure. Actually, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> beefcake! Yeah, beefcake. 
he looks like a beefcake. He's all like, he's all like jacked. Like he's huge. It's like he went to the gym. Beefcake. Oh gosh. Which animal is more difficult to draw for you? Um. The animal that is more difficult f to draw, f uh, I would have to say a cat. I think cats are pretty tough to draw. Like, pretty tough to draw. I always have issues with cats, especially the cat eyes. It's it's really tough. I don't know. I just need to practice more. I think. Eddie, you can draw like me. Just practice. Eventually you'll get there. Urgh! Hardcore! Let's do this! We're gonna we're gonna get this guy we're gonna get this. We're gonna do this. You prefer beefcake to hardcore? Guys, who likes beefcake? Who likes hardcore? You gotta give hardcore a fair chance. He's not done yet. He might look beautiful. Beefcake right now is fully colored and he's looking swell in his beige coat. But Beefcake might give him a run for his money. Gotta say, gotta say. I hope so at least. Okay, let's begin the coloring job. I'm actually really nervous for this one. What colors? Shall I use? I think we're gonna use the same. We're gonna have sand and then we're gonna have a darker one. So rather than having the soft sun that I was working for this one, we're gonna have the darker variation. So he's a bit darker. He's a little bit more on the brown side. So we're gonna use these two colors. We've got sand and then we've got chamois. Chamois. So I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, wait, no. Chamois, which is E35. And then we got sand E33. And I'm probably gonna use some a darker one, maybe chestnut color for the darkest spots under his belly. His belly. So we're gonna start coloring off with the sand color. It's gonna be mostly around his mouth and his face. Okay, so let's do it. Let's just go ahead. I'm not gonna worry too much about erasing the um, sketch marks that I did because the color here is pretty harsh and again when you're drawing with the if you're drawing you're trying to draw fur with the markers you want to go in the same direction as the fur so we're gonna as we make our way around the nose we're gonna change the direction slightly like that This is gonna be a tricky one because his hair uh, is everywhere. He's got this one's a crazy one. He's crazy. He's hardcore. Like that's actually hardcore. Beefcake. Beefcake. Okay. <laughs> uh. Right. This is gonna, okay, guys, this is gonna look weird. We're just gonna go with it. The detail's gonna come when we actually add the darker tones. So right now it's gonna look like a mess. I promise you, it's gonna look much better. Yeah, that looks weird. We'll work on it, we'll work on it. We'll get it done, we'll get it done. I'm actually just saying this to convince myself because I actually think I already ruined it. <laughs> uh. <sighs> it has a huge mustache, yes. <laughs> the thing is, there's like white hair coming in from beneath the dark hair. Oh, I, I, oi, oi, oink. Gosh. Uh, all right. 
Okay, okay, okay. Some beefy cake, yo. Yeah, beefy cake. That that beef cake. I should just literally just color it in. I don't even know why I did that. Like, I should just color it one solid color and add the detail after. Like, what what am I doing? You guys can see. Like, I'm totally a beginner with markers. Ugh. Okay. It's okay, guys. We got this. We got this. <laughs> this is hardcore. This is like next level. Hardcore. Okay, we're gonna add. We're gonna extend this color up to his, like, the fur on top of his head as well. Color in the ear. We'll color in some of these splotches here and here. Lord, 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 Lord. Okay. <laughs> Let's give it a break for a second. Or, but Bunny, have you learned something? Yes, I did. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, for, for real. Yeah. Come on, come on. Okay, well, what I learned in this case was to just col color it all in one go, rather than try to make the movement of the fur. Um, for those of you guys who like don't, who think I'm a professional with this, I'm definitely not. I never use markers in terms of creating sort of semi-realistic animal fur, like I never use markers at all. I typically work with pencil crayons, so what I'm doing right now is just like, what? I, I have no idea. I'm just discovering as I go. <laughs> I would definitely take a different approach with pencil crown rather than what I'm doing now with markers. But I think it's I think we can build it. I think we can we can get it. That <laughs> beef cake is cute. Take home to mom. Hardcore is going to be the one you're really dating. Yeah. The wild one. <laughs> Should I, sh shall I draw like a bow on, on Beefcake? But Beefcake, I already met, like I can't really put anything on her head because I should have planned that from the very beginning rather than. Yeah, this one, this one's a wild pig. Look at that. It's gonna be wild. Wild. All right, all right. Alright, so yeah, hard maybe I should draw his eyes. Let's draw hardcore's eyes. <laughs> hardcore. What a name. Why did I name it hardcore? Just hardcore. Ugh. Uh Wild hardcore. Yeah. Yes. Okay, wait. Let's give it a break. Let's give it a break. Let's bring in the chamois. Chamois color. This is actually a really nice color. It's like a darker shade of the sand color that we were using. And it looks really nice in contrast to sand. Ugh. I am not liking this direction right now. Oof, this is tough. This is tough. Hardcore, why are you gonna be so so intense right now? Nah. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry if that sounded like a dying cow. <laughs> okay. Let's color in the eyeball. Right. <laughs> okay. There we go. I think in this case it's gonna make more sense if I add detail with pencil crayon. I think I did as much as I can at this point. There's just too much Oh no. Oh no. Hardcore is too hardcore for me right now. Uh, but what I'm gonna take is I'm gonna take the burnt sienna and we're going to add some of the darkest areas. So we're gonna fill in the ears here. We're gonna use a lot of pressure because it's pretty much a solid color. We're gonna yeah, color in the ears. <sighs> la 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 la. Okay, yeah. Now let's sharpen the pencil. Okay, I think I can turn this around. <laughs> AQ AQW Demon. Thank you, but you flatter me because this is not at all as I wanted it to look like. Um, I'm really struggling with the one that I'm drawing right now. I actually have no- I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it at this point. Ah, okay. We can do this, we can do this. Guys, I think I have to put my glasses on. So is this supposed to be a tutorial? Yeah, it started off as a tutorial. Um, if you rewind the video, you can rewind it. You can see, like I explained how to draw it. I think, uh, yeah, I definitely explained how to draw it. Um, but at this point now, I think I've kind of <laughs> given up on it. <laughs> Just, I explained how to draw it um, in terms of drawing the coloring. I have videos that I explain how to color animal fur, but pretty much only with pencil crayon. But yeah, I did a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to draw the guinea pigs. And this video will be saved in my stream playlist, so you can definitely look back and see how I drew it. You can also fast forward or slow it down. Um, it's pretty cool. Ah. How are my glasses already blurry? Wait. This piggy's eye looks weird. It's okay. Hardcore! Let's do this! Right, 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 right. <laughs> my glasses are always dirty. Yeah, wait. Like, my glasses are always dirty too. But I don't- I don't remember... Like, it's not like I stick my fingers in my glasses. Maybe I think it's my makeup as well. That gets my glasses dirty. Um... Actually... One second. I have to clean my glasses, guys. A second, I am just cleaning my glosses. Story of my life. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's continue. So, we're pretty much almost done with the face. I think that this is looking pretty cute. He's looking okay. Not as bad. Uh, 
Thanks, Katarina. <laughs> Yeah! Alright, alright. Okay, let's progress with the um, other half of his body, and then we're gonna fill in the white spots with color. So, what did I learn from before in terms of drawing the head? I learned to just apply the color all at once, and um, to apply the detail afterwards. So don't worry about the fur direction if you're drawing a large body of... It really depends. In this case, you kind of had to, because you had to curve up with the guinea pig. Because he has very short hair. So what we're gonna do is da, 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 da. we're just going to use the brush for now. And then we're gonna use the chisel tip to fill in the rest of his body. La 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 la. I never use the chisel tip. I don't know about you guys, I just don't draw with chisel. Or bullet. I've never drawn. I didn't like. I never. I never liked drawing with the chisel. Or the bullet tip. I just don't like it. I think I have more control with the brush, which is why I prefer drawing with it. But it's much easier to get more space colored in with the chisel. Ugh. I'm just gonna abandon it. I don't like it. All right, so basically more or less just color it in. Then we're gonna worry about the details afterwards. Same, I think it's so scratchy and I don't, don't blend nicely. Yeah, exactly, I always had that issue. I feel like it doesn't blend at all um, and it just looks so bad. Okay, now we're gonna take the same color and we're gonna just add another layer of where some of these shadows are or like the different um, sections of the fur. This is gonna be a bit tricky because it's actually going in many directions and there's many tones happening here. Many, many shadows. But in this case, just focus on what you can see, what you want to draw. Not You don't have to draw the entire thing. You don't have to put so much detail into it. Just do as much as you can. Because the more you do it, um, the easier it'll get to establishing how to draw fur. And at the very beginning, it's very overwhelming. Because something like this guinea pig, he has just so many hair strands everywhere, and you just can't, you just can't get it all at first. Especially if you're a beginner. So just focus on some of the most important strands of the animal, and yeah, it will, it will still look good. Bring in the darker tone. Can you do later hours of live stream when I'm not in school? <laughs> um, it depends where you live in the world. Uh, I stream usually at this time because, like right now for me, it's eight o'clock, like eight twenty at night. So if I were to stream earlier, it'd be too late for me. Unfortunately, I don't know. Da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. All right, all right, cool. So while this sort of dries a little bit, we can already work on the white fur to give more definition. So for the white fur, it's important to just erase the, the lines because they will show through. But actually, we can probably draw the lip like that. I 
I always eat my lips when I'm drawing. <laughs> oh, haha. Uh, has it been- have you guys been noticing that? Like, I- I do it all- quite often. It's a bad habit of mine. I don't even realize that I do it. And then people tell me I do funny facial expressions after, and I'm just like, what? Like, what? Was I really? I don't know. <laughs> I'm seriously trying to keep up with you, but mine's pretty bad. I only have colored pencils. Any tips? Yeah, the thing is with pencil crayons, take it easy, take it slow. It's a slow process compared to drawing with markers. Markers, you can cover a whole region pretty quick, but pencil crayons, take it slow. Um, if you're wondering how, check out my video on um, how to draw animal fur that I did. You can find it on my channel. And it goes into um, pretty much a big description on how to draw animal fur with pencil crayons. And it's a bit, it's a much different technique than what I'm doing with markers, actually. So I'd recommend watching that. Like markers, honestly, you can't really draw that realistic. It's much more of a cartoon style, I would say. Unless you put a lot of effort. But with uh, pencil crayons, take it slow, sharpen your pencils um, to get the thinnest possible point. And uh, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of tips I have in the video that I was talking about. Where did you get those amazing markers? These are Copic, Copic markers, and I got them at my local art store. You can find them pretty much anywhere. They're pretty popular, very popular brand. Um, but if you don't have them at your local art store, you can also get them on Amazon. <laughs> Nico, <laughs> what do I think of your voice? I didn't even hear your voice. You were like, barely talking you said like two words <laughs> that's weird why i don't know like what to say about that I've got a l few little wounds around my fingernails. Yeah, so do I. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but my fingernails are so bad. I have this issue in winter where the skin gets so dry, so dry, and I also bite my fingernails a lot, and I just have, like, bloody wounds all over my fingernails. Ugh. I don't- I don't like to put nail polish on either, because I have to upkeep it, and I get too lazy, way too lazy to upkeep it. Yeah! Okay. Good. Gut. Wir sind gleich fertig. Uh, for those of you guys who don't speak German, I just said we are pretty much almost done. If I'm adventurous, I may do like extra floral design around them. I have to think about it though. I'm not so sure. I also have bad, like, my lips get so dry in the winter time, too. Like, right now, they're, they're full of, like, like, open sores on the inside. It's, it, it sounds gross, but it's, like, they get so cracked, and no matter if I use, um, like, lip balm or whatever, it just doesn't, nothing gets better. It's always been that way. My hands are also super dry. Everything is super dry. But it's only my lips and my hands. It's a bit weird. It's actually quite, quite strange. What's that song called? The song is up. You can see it. Wait. Let me point on the camera. Here. <laughs> you can see I have ink on my finger. Here is the song name. It's like the radio. Um, but yeah. Yes, I am opening up a P.O. box. We found a location and we are. Um, yeah, we're definitely gonna open up one up soon. Probably when we come back from Iceland. 
uh, we're, we're definitely gonna sign up for it. I think it's like 20 bucks a year to open up a P.O. box and then you guys can send me some art and whatever things you want to send me, you guys can send me. Um, so it's very important because I'm actually getting companies contacting me to review things and I need a P.O. box for that rather than send it to my home address. And also if I'm sending drawings to people, like, I don't really want to give out my private address. <laughs> Guys, why are you sending- You're telling me I have to do so many things. Let me go on vacation first and we're gonna- I have to get into it. <laughs> Guys, I'm almost at 17,000 subscribers. I only need a couple more. 17,000 subscribers. I hope I reach 17,000 tonight. That'd be so cool. I'd be so amazed. Whoa. I know I have to watch it. I know, I know. If you, if I were to open a P.O. box, guys, would you guys actually send me things like uh, art or fan art or any sort of, I don't know. What would you send me? I have no idea. Like I've never sent anyone, I've never s contacted anyone through a P.O. box before. I don't really know like <laughs> what to expect to be honest with you. I just think of like fan art maybe or like art in general. I would love to receive your art. I think it'd be so cool. One of the coolest things ever. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah, Emily, you can do it. <laughs> hey, I was at 200 subs in September, so if I can do it, you definitely can. Okay. I would send you Copic markers. No! <laughs> They're too expensive. I, uh, I, I don't need, like, I don't need this stuff because I can, I, I hate to say it, but I can afford it because I do work a full-time job, so it's no big deal to afford these, like, more pricey things. And I don't really want it to, like, kind of admit that because I know a lot of you guys are young, you can't afford, you know, that sort of thing. But honestly, you do not need the most expensive art supplies to start off. I have learned how to use them first. But I'm at an age, like I'm 25 years old, and I've always wanted to own all these Copic markers and all these Faber-Castell pencil crayons, or the whole set of Faber-Castell, and I'm at the age now where I'm just like, yeah, I want to buy everything. Like all the art supplies I used to dream of. Um, as a child, I'm just going crazy and spending everything, so <laughs> it's been a long time coming and I feel like I deserve it, to be honest with you, after all my hard work. But I did spend like a long time just just being comfortable sketching with just pencil and paper, you know? I thought you worked this part-time job. No, not yet. In September I will. Um, but. Yeah, right now it's full time, so yeah, I can only live stream on the weekends and um, do some videos as well during the week, but I can't do as much as I wish I could. I really want to pump up this channel a lot more, but it's really tough to do so when you work. Hello, Holland Rose, welcome. Uh, okay. La 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 I remember when I used graphite pencils, most no sketches, that was a while ago. Yeah, graphite pencils is really fun to draw with though. I think it's a good way to start learning. Especially learning the values and learning how to shade and whatnot. I think graphite is really, really nice. It's a nice, I think it's always been a beautiful way of drawing. It's a little bit more traditional as well. Depends what kind of art you want to do though. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. 
let's bring in the darker. La 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 Should really darken up under his belly. So let's let's bring in the sepia or the dark sepia I should say. We're gonna really focus on darkening up the fur under his belly. His belly gonna darken up the fur. And we're going to mix that in with the burnt sienna as well. Kind of just blend those two colors together. Like that. <laughs> I started off making realistic portraits of people in graphite. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I did not start off that way and I regret it. Actually, I'm learning how to do it now. Um, and I'm not very good at it. I'm not good at all. Um, it's something that I don't really show you guys because I am practicing other things on the side and I just can't, I just can't, uh, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just never started off that way. So like I'm starting to try to do graphite portraits of animals as well, but this one is, it's pretty tough for me. Is it bad that I don't want you to get like a million subscribers or something crazy like that because that kind of like small triggers where you pay attention to the chat? I wish I could get a million subscribers. You know how cool that'd be? But the thing is, I know, I know what you're saying, but I would try my hardest to stay. I don't think even if I had that many subscribers, I don't think that my chat would be too crazy regardless. Like right now I have what, almost 17,000 subscribers and I only have approximately 60 people in the chat. Um, so I don't think it'd be that crazy. And I would still do live streams um, and maybe I would do like, I, I don't know, I would do, I would definitely do some live streams and try to pay attention to all of you. It's, it's still hard at this point, but yeah, it's definitely not something I would stop. What's my favorite Copic color? That is a good question. Um, I'd have to say, this is a really close one. Like, I have a lot of colors I really like, but this is one of my favorites because I use it quite often. It's Mignonette, which is like a light green, and it's YG11. Um, it's a beautiful color, it's very translucent, and it works really well when I'm drawing floral. And some sort of like soft background. If I want a really pretty soft romantic background, I'll use that color. It's really nice. No, I've never been in a stream. Like, actually, the only stream that I was in that was like insane was one of PewDiePie's stream, and I was like, <gasps> "What is going on?" Like, I just you just you just can't you just can't read it. It's just weird. You just can't. Just don't go there. All right, so let's draw the shading under the belly. I think it's my rabbit's dinner time, so he's waiting for dinner right now. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Nine! <laughs> you learned a German word. <laughs> yeah. How did I get my channel so big, Bunny? I actually, I, I owe my channel size, like the growth of my channel, a lot to the fact that, um, like from live streaming actually, a lot of the people come from live streaming and it's really nice, it's just like constant content that I can upload and um, people can be with me or whatever and sometimes it gets recommended to other people. And I got a lot of my fan base from, from that. And at the beginning, the live streams were pretty crazy. Like they were happening really quick. The first few were not so much, but the like when I got to like the fourth or the fifth live stream, they would get recommended like insane. And one one live stream I had, I had over two thousand people watching me at once, and the chat was going crazy. And I was so, I had no moderators, I had nothing, and I was getting death threats, and I was getting like crazy like sexual things nonstop in the chat. And I didn't know what to do, and I was freaking out. And that live stream boosted me up by. To 3,000 subscribers that day. And I was like, 
whoa dang like that was insane but i've never had something like that again like i don't know what's going on or what i'm doing wrong some live streams can get pretty popular pretty fast and i wonder if it's youtube's algorithm like the fact that they want to promote young or uh, smaller channels but now maybe because i have like seventeen thousand, they think that i'm not so much a small channel anymore i, I don't really know I don't think my live streams are being recommended anymore. A lot of people were coming to my live streams too saying like, yeah, I saw this in my recommended or people were also saying, I don't even know why this was recommended to me, but it was. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how you guys found me. Like, I would love to know how you guys found me through YouTube. I think it's pretty interesting. Like, if rather if you searched for something and you found me, or like, how did you guys find my channel? I'd be really interested in, in learning that. Ah, <laughs> you've got 72k subs. You got enough promotion already. I need more. No, I'm not that greedy. Like, I'm not a greedy person. I just really want to make this work great for the future because I have big plans um, for what I want to do with art so recommended for you on the front page <laughs> that'd be cookie thank you <laughs> it's pretty interesting to see where you guys found me it's really cool through Prisma colors? What? That's so random. I don't even talk about Prisma color. Uh, Mia found you through the popular live stream. Yeah, a lot of people did at that time. I was like freaking out. I was drawing a cat. It wasn't even that great. Ah, Bulba Chew. Interesting. I'm also subscribed to Juicy. Juicy Ink. She does pretty cool art. <laughs> Emerald Sapphire, thanks for joining. Um, tips for artists. <sighs> Aspiring artists. Yeah, of course. I do have tips. It's a lot. I think I'm going to definitely be doing a video talking about it. Um, in like a sketchbook diaries video, which I have to upload one actually. Um, I have a lot of tips and it's a actually a lot like I think the biggest one is to just never give up on yourself Never give up on yourself. I've been through all these times where I, I really did <sighs> Give up and stop drawing altogether and I never consider like what I'm doing now I never consider I would do this ever or draw to this level and It's all because of practice non-stop practice non-stop practice. That's what, how you will get good. No one is born to draw this way no one is born with talent um you have to develop it over time so <laughs> i found you by looking up sugar gliders then tapping on a bunny video that was recommended and then you were recommended dang that's so random i thought some of the marks on the video of yours had prisma but no it wasn't but i saw the other videos and i'm like yes oh you guys are so great What? Emily, really? That's so random. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you were an early subscriber. That's really cool. <laughs> okay, so now the question is, So we've got beefcake, and then we've got hardcore. Now the question is whether I am done, or shall I continue? <laughs> am I done, or shall I continue? And if I continue, what shall I draw? What shall I draw? What shall I draw? I've been drawing for two and a half hours. What shall I draw? background you guys want me to continue right let me think of an idea um i'm thinking guys i'm thinking give me a second um 
Ah, wish. I'm trying to think of that flower. What's the flower name? Not peony, peony. Peony. What shall I draw? What shall I draw? A fat squirrel. Why do you guys want me to draw a fat squirrel? I drew a squirrel, by the way. I don't know if you guys can see. I drew a squirrel, but I don't know. I don't really like it. I screwed up on the background and whatnot. But I tried to draw a squirrel. That was squirrel. -ed. Something fun that doesn't take too much thought. I like that idea. I'm not going to be drawing a huge background. What I think I'm going to be drawing is some peonies. 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 Probably not pronouncing that right. I love drawing this flower. This flower is beautiful. B -b -b beautiful. Oh, it's a bit complicated though. Let me see if I can find a very chill flower. What kind of flower? Do you guys have flower recommendations? Lilacs. Like I would like to have, uh, my idea here is to have a large flower sticking out here, a large flower, like matching flower here, with some petals, um, and then possibly, like they're standing in like a bed of flowers or something. I think that'd be pretty cute. Cactus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rose. I always draw roses. I like peonies. I, I mean, I'm looking on Pinterest, which is my number one source of imagery. <laughs> I like peonies. Peonies are beautiful, but I want the simple one, not the complex. Nah, we don't want to put too much time into this. Just a very simple flower. Buttercups? Dahlias. Okay, one sec. What's up, guys? Let me Google. Okay, so we have buttercups. Let me Google buttercups. But some yellow would be pretty cute, though. Buttercups. Yes. Dandelions. <laughs> Tulips, since you like Amsterdam. I like that idea. <laughs> uh, marigolds. I haven't. Snowdrop flower. Marigolds. Oh my gosh, this takes me back to my childhood. Oof, marigolds are gonna be... I've never drawn a marigold before. And most importantly, what color? Violets. Violets? I feel like a nice pink would go well with the color scheme here. Like a light pink with some yellow like buttercups if we have buttercups in there wait i think like okay so here um if i were to draw some buttercups orchids are also nice i've drawn orchids in the past though i think i want to draw something new today Dahlia. I haven't searched Dahlia. One sec. Dahlia, Dahlia. Dahlias are nice too. Huh. Lilies. Ooh, wait a second. Perhaps a lily. Whoa, lilies would be tough. I've never drawn a lily. Dahlias are gonna be too tough though, I think. How about like keep it simple? Violets and Mary Violets and buttercups or violets. Mm. Let's draw some violets. Okay, we're gonna draw a bouquet of violets as a base, kind of a flower base. We're gonna start off with that. I'm trying to think here. <laughs> What kind of violets? Oh gosh, I should have looked into this. Okay, so we're gonna draw, let's 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 map them out here. So we're gonna have one violet here. We're gonna have another little violet here. And typically when I'm drawing uh, flowers, I like to start off in box forms, like maybe hexagons or like boxes or whatnot. I don't really, uh, I don't know. 
I don't draw it fully right now. Again, stick with the geometric shapes at first, and then you'll be good. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'm gonna draw another violet here. Another violet here. One in the background, like that. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I need one more flower. Violets are beautiful. Very, I like the purple. We're gonna draw a very soft purple. And then marigolds, nope, out of the question. Clovers, ooh, a clover. Okay, first let's start with the violets. We're gonna start coloring this in first. Then we'll, I'll look at what is needed because guys, um, less is more. I'm sure people have told you that before. Let me update the thumbnail. We're gonna remove the reference photos now. And we're gonna update the thumbnail before I proceed with the flowers because the flowers is actually not planned whatsoever So I hope that I can get it right But flowers typically I really enjoy drawing flowers. Okay, so pig number three um, Okay, so let's change the thumbnail Hello, ducky. Ducky. I'm gonna start with the flowers on the left side. Let me get my reference photo back up. <laughs> you guys don't have to watch the whole stream. I've been, I mean, yeah, I've been streaming. I don't want to stream too much longer because I do want to Skype with my family. Uh, but we can add a few more, like a bit of pop of color because we've got too much beige happening here. And I kind of want to draw some more, uh, just a little bit more. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, so what I do is I start off with little boxes on the edges. So I've already mapped out where the flowers will be. And now I'm going to draw them in. So we have one here and we are just going to do the, the general petal shape. So these, um, what are they called again? Violets? Violets have... I believe oh I don't know how many petals they have I can't really tell wait <laughs> it looks like three at first and then there's like hidden ones underneath I've never drawn these before so I hope that I'm doing okay just gonna draw like that we have to erase some of the lines as well Try to get the pattern in the center. We're gonna be doing a very light pattern and then in the center is pretty dark or is it yellow? Hmm, I don't know. I've never drawn these. Okay, now we're gonna draw more. Will you finish this today? Yes, of course. We're not doing the entire background. We're just doing a little bit of detail with the petals or the flowers. And again, when you're drawing flowers, you want to make sure that the petals, unless that's what you want to do, but I always make it a point that the petals are not entirely too perfect. They're, they've got some bumps, they've got some um, missing parts of the petal, maybe a caterpillar ate some, some petals. So you want to make it a bit crooked and you want to make some gaps in between as well. It's not perfect. Mother Nature is not perfect, so that's okay. I'm gonna draw the last one at the top here. Thank you, Just Simona. <laughs> Three, four, five petals. Yeah, they. Is that how much petals they have? I, I don't really know. It's pretty hard to judge. Um, one more flower, so we're gonna add one more. The flowers are kind of, they're, they're not really, um, they're gonna look a bit, okay, never mind, wait. Let's try here. What I wanted to say is that they're gonna look, they're facing towards us rather than making it look like they're kind of in the background. I don't know how to describe it. They're not at the same angle as the guinea pigs. Uh, but this is okay. This is the way that I usually draw them. It doesn't look that bad. All 
All right. Now in the same style as the guinea pigs, we're gonna outline them before we progress with the coloring. So I just need my marker. So we're gonna outline Now these violets have a specific pattern in the center, so we're going to already go ahead with the black aligner and fill in this pattern. It's kind of like, yeah, don't really know how to describe it. What ink pen is this? Um, this is the here, Faber-Castell uh, Pit Artist Pen. And they come with all kinds of different um, nib sizes, which I really, really like. It's a whole package. I think, I think this costs like 11 euros. I'm, I don't really remember, but it's pretty good price for what you get anyways in Germany. I, I don't know about international prices. Are they refillable? These ones are not refillable. It's just a one-time buy, but they're not that expensive. Like I, I think that they're a pretty good fair price. Like the S I've used so long now. I think I've only had to buy in another one once. They last pretty night, like pretty long I find. All right, last petal. I really hope I don't screw up the coloring for this. Okay, so we've got three little violets. Now they are dark purple, light purple, and a little bit yellow in the center. So we have to get the proper colors for this. I'm gonna be using Copic. Um, or... I'm gonna be using Copic. So we've got the mauve shadow. I really have to test this out though. Let me test it on a napkin or a Taschentusche for those Germans. It's not really the ideal. Oh, that is a beautiful color. Okay, this is the color I need. And I need a darker one to match. So let's see, amethyst. No, that's way too dark. Have you considered doing one sketchbook in one week? I am doing one sketchbook over the break, which is two weeks. I've seen those videos and I actually have considered it. I think what I'm going to do is when I go to Iceland in a few days, I will be bringing a sketchbook and doing, cause I'm there for like five or six days. So it's pretty much a week. So I could probably do some sketches in Iceland. Uh, cause I won't have anything else to do apart from like visiting and stuff. Okay, so we're gonna use these two colors here. We're gonna be using the mauve shadow, which is BV00, and then we're gonna be using prune, which is BV02. And for the center, we're gonna be using a light golden color. Golden yellow! All right. <laughs> do you use shading or graphite pencils? If so, what kind? I do use graphite pencils. I use the uh, Castell 9000. That's the only ones I've ever used. All right, so move shadow. Let's begin. I'm gonna take this. Let's take this. Let's do this. All right, so let's begin. Uh, yeah. Don't really. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. I've never done these flowers before. We're gonna start off with the mauve shadow. At least, yeah, okay, that's mauve shadow. 
Then we're gonna add the darker prune color on top on the like the inner sections of the flower. We have to make sure that we keep a white outline in the center because uh, there is white in the center of the flower. Sort of like that. I think that's okay, not so bad. Na, 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 na. And then we're going to use the golden yellow for the center. There we go. Let me see how that looks like. I think it needs to be much darker in the center. So let's, I think we're going to have to use a different color. Um, maybe we, wait, let's add another layer of prune. I think we can make it work. No, we still need that extra pop. We need a vibrant. You can't donate on Bunny Stream. Um, there is a donate. Well, actually, I installed for the very first time the super chat. You guys should see it down below. The super chat. I saw it in a live stream the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you can donate to streamers. And this is a new functionality from YouTube. So yes, if you guys want, there's a donation button. Um, down below there's a super chat function where you can donate but I'm not asking for donations it's only if you want it does help support me um, but it's not something that I'm just like ah oh, I need donations I would definitely appreciate it but don't feel the need oh that's really too dark ah. okay wait I think that this color I'm looking for a vibrant purple this is not what I want I've got 20 million purples and I don't have the right color. Let's try the amethyst. Ooh, yes, girl, yes! Okay. This is the color I was looking for. This whole time is right in front of my face. Na 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 na. Now I just need to blend a little bit better here. These flowers are so small, but there's a lot of detail in them. And then the outer flowers. I'm just gonna use the mauve shadow. Like that. How did you come to live in Germany? Were you born there or did you decide to move there? Is living there fun? <laughs> yes, living here is very, very fun. I was not born here. I moved because um, of a, I moved because of a guy. <laughs> and uh, about five years ago, I moved here. And I've lived here ever since. I don't know. And I love living. I, it was always a dream of mine to live in Europe. So it was like, yeah, I want to go to Europe so bad. And I did it. Hello, AMV maker. Welcome. Ooh, I totally missed the lines here. Oopsie. We're gonna add amethyst. And the golden yellow. I live in Denmark, that's super cool. I've never been. I would like to go though. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm originally from Canada. Toronto to be exact. Toronto. Yeah, there we go, there we go. I think these flowers are turning out not that bad. I quite like them. That drawing is cute as your name is, thank you. <laughs> Bunny, yeah, the name Bunny. <laughs> I didn't ask to be called Bunny, it was just, it just kind of happened. Even my colleagues call me Bunny. It's, a, it's not my real name, just so you guys know. It's just a nickname. Yeah. 
Yeah! Studying German? Yeah, that's great! It's a hard language to study, I have to... I have to tell you that, I, I've been there, done that, and I really failed, actually, so I'm pretty... Pretty happy. I think, to me, it gave me a big push in the butt was to move to Germany and to have to live in the actual, uh, like, country. But even then, I got really lazy to learn the language. Because everyone here speaks English. Like, in Berlin, everyone speaks English. Uh, <laughs> donation? I've just donated $200 and it showed OP in the live stream. I don't think you donated. <laughs> I would have said. Usually, like, it's a new functionality where it's like the super chat you can donate, and then it's gonna pop up with a message you wanna write, um, and it's going to appear at the very top of the stream for a long period of time. Um, but. <laughs> there was no donation. Alright, so we've got the flowers. Now, what I want to do for the flowers, we're going to add thicker lines underneath where the shadows are. Ooh, that was a thick line! No! Oh gosh, I made that line way too thick. No! It's okay, it's okay. is so gross can you make a video how good you improve that would really inspire me to draw yes 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 i want to do another draw this again challenge i have so much art lying around that i did like two years ago and i want to recreate it because it's so funny that's so funny stuff got some really funny stuff um, from what I used to draw. Actually, I still have the first drawing of my first bunny, so maybe I should recreate that. It'd be so weird. Okay, so let's draw the flower in the back here. Do I do, I do the weird English accent? I think it's a, a bad habit at this point, honestly. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I think it comes out. Maybe because you're in the chat, it's just like coming out. Oi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna draw another one here. I've got, yeah, this is a gross line. I don't like it, but it's okay. How do I set a box with candy in it? Ooh, um, <laughs> I don't know if I want candy. I'm not a huge candy fan, I'm a huge chocolate fan. But I'll be opening up a, um, I'll be opening up a P.O. box very soon after we come back from our trip. So like in a week and a half or so. So hopefully by then I'll have a P.O. box and you guys can send me stuff if you want. Some sort of fan art or anything else. It's okay, I do a weird American accent. Neon, are you are you also British? Ah, oh, Emily, you have to do an Ameri American accent for me. Ah, oh, that was so funny. I find it really cool when British actors do American accents. It's pretty funny. It's really nice. Purple fluff. Super purple fluff. Mm. 
Indian and Irish. <laughs> I could also do Indian, but I feel so bad doing it. It's like, Stroopwaffle. 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 I feel like I've eaten that before, but I can't be so sure. Why don't you make some vlogs? I will be doing some vlogs. I'll be um, uploading a vlog next weekend, actually. Or, I hope next weekend. I have to work on it first because I'm doing a pretty intense vlog, I think. Um, I'm gonna be doing adventure style vlog. You guys will know more about it later on. I'm pretty excited to do it. Ooh, I have a color called violet, actually, and I'm not using it. <laughs> uh, it doesn't even look like the proper color, though, this way. Yes, Schwimmwagen. Schwimmwagen. Hola. Schwimmwagen. Okay, so let's um, further enhance the lines here as well. Yes. Right. I think what's missing also is the shadow under the actual flowers. Like that. That looks much better. So let's add a darker shadow. Do you have a side channel for vlogs? No, I don't. I have everything on this channel. I do vlogs once in a while, not very often. Um, I would like to do it in the future, but I just don't have enough time to do both art and vlogs. And I think that my vlogs would be much more interesting in the summertime because I do a lot of side things that would be pretty cool to show you guys. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much things to vlog. <laughs> Nowadays. There we go. That's looking better. We can even enhance the shadows. Will hardcore get a background too? Yeah, I'm gonna draw some flowers here. Um, the same ones. We're gonna try to draw the same sort of style. Hardcore, yeah. Hardcore gets a background, yeah. It's gonna have some purple flowers. Okay, last set of flowers, guys. So, um, where's my pencil? Okay, very nice, very nice. All right. I feel like there is green missing too, actually. Let me get to the green after. Let's, we're gonna see if it's actually, if I should put green in it. I feel like you're right though. I think that there should be green in it. I should put this one here. Thank you, 
world. <laughs> now we're gonna keep it the same flowers as uh, beefcake. So I don't want to complicate this drawing too much. I, these flowers were totally unplanned. I was not even considering drawing flowers. But I always do this. I always do this thing where I want to keep the drawing simple. Um, and then I end up drawing like <laughs> so much random stuff around it. But that's fun though. I, I do enjoy doing that. Okay. Okie dokes. Uh, thanks, really. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. I, I'm aware I did uh, make a British accent there. Where did their names come from? Uh, well, originally I, I was drawing this guy here and I thought that he looked too big and his head was too big and his body looked weird and to me he just reminded me of a beefcake which is like someone that's super like jacked or whatever is what you call someone you call them a beefcake and then i was saying when i was starting to draw this guy i was like whoa this one is really hardcore like this is a guinea pig for beginners to draw and then this is like one for like hardcore artists because it's like the fur is everywhere and it was really complicated so i just ended up calling it beefcake and hardcore i don't know beefcake beefcake Beefcake. My email address is listed in, I have it here, you can see that. Info at brushesandbunnies.com is also down below in the video description. Beefcake. Alright, so let's proceed with the prune color. We've got some prune here. Let's do the pruny. Pruny, pruny, pruny. Let's do the pruny. Let's do pruny. Oh my god. <laughs> Beefcake. Yo, Shy Psycho, welcome. Whoa, 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 welcome. All right, so now we'll do the little yellow beef core. Dang, yeah, beef core. <laughs> that sounds so gross. Beef core. Bleah. So let's extend the shadow. We extend the shadow here. Under shadow, under shadow. We go add some shadow. Oh my gosh, Wolf Princess, that's a, what are you asking here? Bunny, would you rather never draw or paint again but be rich? Or would you rather draw and paint again but have no money? Well, I'd rather uh, draw and paint because I could make money from drawing and painting if I really wanted to. Uh, I think rich doesn't make you happy. I think I would go crazy. <laughs> Why would you, like, money doesn't... What's the saying? Money doesn't buy you happiness. It does, <laughs> but I mean, you gotta have a hobby. I mean, you can't just sit there with a pile of cash and not do anything. Like, what do you wanna do? Okay, so some of you guys have been requesting that I draw some green. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw a couple leaves in between. Um, leaves that are typically found with the violet flower. They're just gonna be sticking out. I, th I think we're not gonna do too much, too much work here. Um, I think I just want to keep this drawing very simple. Uh, yeah. Sort of, yeah, okay. No Leuvenzahn, and I don't, do guinea pigs like Leuvenzahn? I know rabbits love it. For those of you guys who don't know, that's Dandelion in Auf Deutsch in German. 
Oh, baby, my rabbit's really hungry, so I'm gonna have to f finish the stream very soon. We're just gonna do the final touches here. And I'm gonna have to get off and feed my rabbit. <laughs> my baby! He just ran into his cage. All right, I think that's okay. Baby, are you hungry? Yeah. <coughs> sunrise or sunset? For me, I love the sun itself, but I prefer to eat photos watching the sunset. Yeah, I also like the sunset. I mean, sunset is... Thing is, I really like nighttime. Um, I've always liked, preferred nighttime over daylight. Uh, sounds weird. But I feel like I could concentrate better during the night. And sunset has always been really nice. Sunrise, I'm never awake for sunrise. I, I'm not an early riser. I prefer sleeping in. Well, not sleeping in. To me, sleeping in is like 9 o'clock, 10. But I prefer staying up late. <laughs> and drawing or writing. Or watching movies. So I prefer sunset. <laughs> Wolf princess! Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, you guys are funny. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Living on the edge. That is living on the edge. You gotta watch out with those greasy fingers. Ooh. Wow. You are definitely living on the edge. Okay, so let's test the colors again. We're looking for a greenish, yellowish color with hints of... That is way too bright. I'm gonna have to check my colors here. So we have the lime green. Yes, 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 I like lime. Lime green is more on topic. Okay, let's, I think we're gonna use the lime green. Yeah, this is nice. Nice green. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Sam Sims. Ah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Emily. Um, Emily. Emily. <laughs> uh, I'm such a loser. I'm trying so hard. Emily. I can't. I cannot do an accent. Oh gosh. Alrighty. Okay. Oh what? Hi S did I already say hi Sam Sam? So hello. Hello again. I'm totally losing like <sighs> I don't remember what I say anymore. It's bad. I'm like an old lady. I am an old lady. <sighs> okay. Shall we just darken up some of the spots beneath? We're gonna use the cool gray number five. Wait a second, I think I have a darker one. <gasps> cool gray number seven! <gasps> yes. Yes. <laughs> you, I, you don't like when I speak with a British accent? Is you guys making fun of me? Okay, we're gonna add that extra last mile here the extra last step of darkness color 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 yes yes we're almost there this has been a long time coming how long have i been streaming three hours 19 minutes <gasps> guinea pigs you are cute okay last but not least we sign the drawing so we're just gonna sign it directly below uh, hardcore here. Will you do another one tonight? Nope. N -n 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 nope. John Matias, welcome. I, uh, what paper board are you using? I could show you. Uh, my poor rabbit is waiting for food. Yeah, this is the paper that I'm using. Whoop. Dollar Rani is the brand and it is fine grain, heavyweight, 120 pounds. Um, pretty much mixed media paper. It's very thick and it works really, really well. 
it works well. Like this is what I did to draw the wolf that I did yesterday, um, which was watercolor primarily. Works well with markers, works well with pencil crayon and watercolor so far, what I've tested. As a Brit myself, I'm heavily disappointed with your impression. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm disappointing my British subscribers. Oh gosh. Okay, I am doing the last... What am I doing? Why am I writing it like this? Ah! I typically never write this big before. I don't know what I'm doing. I just ruined it with my signature. <laughs> this is not even my signature. Ah! Okay. Whatever. We're gonna draw a little heart, because why not? I've already ruined it this much. Guys! Ich bin fertig. Ich bin fertig. We are done. I'm quite hungry. I have to feed my little rabbit. He's waiting patiently in his litter box. And um, I'd like to thank you guys all for joining my live stream. It didn't work out as planned at the beginning, but I think we did a pretty good, or had a pretty good time. I will not be live streaming uh, next weekend. I am on vacation in Iceland, which will not have good internet. Um, I will be finishing, or I'll be filming for, for vlog material, some really cool travel vlog material, and um, I'll be seeing you guys soon, but I'll be uploading videos in the meantime, like art videos and whatnot. So, thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Blah, 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 blah. So we're going to have a, a giveaway very soon, just so you know. Thank you guys all for your support. I really appreciate it, and I wish you guys such an awesome... Sunday um, or Saturday, wherever you are in the world. Bye bye. Bye, my bunny buns. <laughs>